Just got a text the other day from Mike Stacks. He's our representative over at Sport Subaru right there, it, John Young Parkway. Yeah, yeah. Would it be disrespectful if I called him Mikey Stacks? No, no. He okay. likes it. He I like it. That's a cool name. He, he just texts me, hey, there's a BDM that just bought a car. Here's their information. If you want to text them to set up, uh, you know, they want to come in and watch the show. Nice. And uh, that's the cool thing about Mike Stacks is he's helped so many different uh, listeners and BDMs buy yeah. cars that you know someone as soon as you say, hey, let me talk to Mike Stacks. Yeah, and you, he's dealt with a medium. He knows the it's process. The he's gonna try to hook you We've up. Been looking yeah. for the word it, yeah. or the phrase. It's an icebreaker. It's like literally, you jump to the front of the line. Yeah, he knows what you want to do and who you're affiliated with. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, the guy's a BDM, and he's gonna give you the best deal yeah. and the best service because he knows you're gonna come in and watch a show after you buy a car and tell us he how your experience you is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also J C Harrelson uh, over there in Claremont, uh, Don Mealy Chevrolet in Claremont. I got my Chevy Silverado. And the Chevy Traverse from yep. them, um, they're great as well. Uh, and JC will hook you up with a salesperson over there. He's the general sales manager, so he can take care. of I've you. been seeing these strange colored Corvettes. I don't yeah. know if they have like limited colors, but especially around here, that new mid. Well, it's not new now, but the mid engine. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, I've been seeing these like rare yeah. colors. There's a blue that I want to ask JC. Do you think JC would loan us a blue mid engine? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, they're uh, even yeah, just for photos. Popular. Do Oh, maybe it was just for photos yeah. with Moon Jet. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe. put a camel girl. I'll you know? text, I was texting him the other day. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it, it's a beautiful car. So if you want a vehicle, and I'm telling you, you got to check out that brand new dealership, uh, North John Young Parkway. Yeah, at, that's the Subi dealership. Yeah. Yeah, um, they have all the best technology. Um, they're really cool it's inside. It's fun. Yeah, and yeah. if you're a, a Subaru enthusiast, like I know a lot of you guys are, um, if you haven't checked out the new dealership, pop by there. You know, get yourself a coffee and a croissant. Yeah, it's Sport Subaru North. John Young Parkway and Don Millie Chevrolet in Claremont. And I then like I, that made, hair. I made a, another one that's a little funny is you as a hoarder sitting in your home. <laughs> that's you. And then you're surrounded by feces and trash. <laughs> this is you yeah, surrounded by you, feces and trash. You didn't even do used to wait, waste a token on doing that. You could yeah. just come to my house. I did a zoom, I zoomed in on this one though. Here, I did I did a zoom in on it. So okay, oh, yeah. there see? What do you think of that? <laughs> What do you think of that, that one? That yeah. is me. <laughs> it, look, it looks, I mean, so, I swear to God, it looks exactly I'm like skinny. you. Yeah. And then I asked it to just go crazy with it. I said, give me Jeff Howe performing at the House of Blues. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Howe ripping it up in front oh, yeah. of the House of Blues. Oh, like yeah. Donald Trump. It looks a little like Donald Trump. Yeah. I, I think that's because yeah. so many people are using uh, AI to create Trump that it just, yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. the way yeah. it got yeah, it That's Jeff Howe, the small yeah, penis here. That's you. Yeah. That's you rocking and rolling in front of the House of Blues. So, yeah, you can see all of these on our YouTube at Tom and Ann Live. So, Jeff, I'm curious. <laughs> a waste of thirty dollars. <laughs> you, you know, well, okay. What th- th- this is a more serious question, Jeff? Uh-huh. So, as an artist, and I know you've never like no, I've known you for twenty years, yeah, and you've never really been. Uh, y- you've been an artist your whole life, but you've never really taken being an artist. I don't, I don't like that tag. Very yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, even though yeah. the, you are. You've created well, you. music yeah. for how long yeah. now? Uh, I always get a songwriter. Well, that, well thank you. you. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, that's that's my strongest. Well, entertaining is my strongest sure. suit. But, um, Tom, I've been doing this since uh, 1977. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man, I was one year yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, and I'm the oldest member of our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that 48 years? 47. 40, 47. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 47 years. So 47 years yeah. you've been uh, creating music and art. That's yeah. Awesome. And so your whole life. And so, it, but it, and now with AI, see, AI is coming in, and we've been yeah. we've been joking around for yeah. months now and stuff, yeah. like either with the art or with the, even the music. Sure. You know, Daniel types in a couple sentences and AI will create a song in 12 seconds. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. and, and it'll put it out there. But really, it's just, it's when they say create, yeah. it's it's just um, mushing together sure. uh, 10,000 pieces of information. Yes. It's yes. scraping the internet instantaneously yeah. and putting together what is mimicking sure. the the art of humans, Absolutely. basically, essentially. Yeah. So I'm curious to what your thoughts are about this, because I imagine that this will start becoming blended 
blended into oh, yeah. where people are not under like where are they going to appreciate human art or they can't tell the difference yeah. between uh, yeah. can you appreciate artificial? both yeah and is and this actual human, art and if yeah. a human created the AI program that yeah. makes the song is yeah. that still human created art because yeah. we created the program and you're, you're putting in the prompts that's creating yeah. this uh, yeah. you know image you know I, I'll tell you what in my opinion yeah my opinion is it will be normalized and it'll be it'll actually sound really good now right now it's just taking little snippets of different things but the same reason that uh, when they started auto tune, everybody says, "Oh no, don't use that too much." People can tell when you yeah. auto tune, and now, or it's... even digital music in general. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like but, going but, from playing a regular drum set to to digital yeah. drums yeah, yeah, yeah. in production. Yeah, and, and now and, it's normal. And now even people like the sound of over uh, auto tuned voices. Where you you know when they're singing, and uh, so it sounds normal. So this will be normalized, in my opinion. In fact, my total opinion of the AI thing is that the movie, uh, The Matrix, and Blade Runner, and all of them, where the robots are, you know, AI is taking over, and that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, no. I know it seems kind of far fetched. That's it's going to happen one way or the other. They don't even need robots. All they need is AI to get smart enough and self aware enough to get itself in our infrastructure and just you know oh, just yeah. like tear us down from the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you me and Jeff are on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there, tear I mean, it down from the inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you guys were talking about having sex or something. I was like, uh, I, I, Bill Clinton. Um, I wrote <laughs> a, I wrote a song for Jeff in twelve seconds. No, okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right uh, this one, one it's uh, you got two choices. We have got um, I I just wrote, write a country song about a man named Jeff Howe who doesn't believe in God. Oh, oh man. All right. All right. That's all I said. Okay. It gave me Faith's Final Test, a <laughs> country introspective heartfelt song, or Walking the Line, a storytelling oh. country heartfelt song. Oh, so wow. here's, mm. this is Faith's Final Test for Jeff Howe. No, my name is Jeff Howe, <laughs> and I'll tell you truth, I don't believe in God, don't see the proof. Go. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. woman's got a point. Yeah, yeah. here's the, here's the other one. Jeff Howe, the man of the land. He was a man of the land. Working hard with callous hands. Yeah. He never had much time for church on Sunday. <laughs> God damn. Thought religion was just a game. Here we go. He's walking the line, standing his ground. A man of reason, beliefs unbound. He don't need God to guide his way. Just his own two feet come what may. He don't need God yeah. to guide his way. Just his Man. own two feet come what may. That's not bad. <laughs> that is really not no, I, look, It's not bad. It's not bad at it's all. Not, it's not the best. Yeah. It, it's a little corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, but they're going by what's out there now. Dude, yeah. it writes what's out there now. Yeah. Now, that I'll give it. If yeah. AI said, hey, Dan, do you think I can be a country music songwriter? I'd be like, you're there, yeah. AI. The, you look, have what it takes. Here's the thing that blows my mind. You did that in 20 seconds. Mm. Yeah. That's what blows my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. Just, the, just the lyrics. Well, and this well, isn't that's... even the best version. This is just what I... Little Danny Denny in the middle of Podunk Orlando can do. Yeah, you know, if in twenty it, seconds during the show, when you should have been talking to me, I should have been talking. <laughs> to you. You're right. Well, hold I'm on. so sorry. Come here and hug me. I never, <laughs> I never thought there would be a day where I'm defending art and uh, like yeah. what it means. But I feel like shouldn't art have some sort of real like, art, soul. Like, a, like soul, soul. Like, like real beef, like and, we did with beef, like hundred no. percent beef. But also some like like <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears yeah. and. And, and like oh, something like, should. That you're like put into it, yeah. where it's like even you know we're like you you know we're, we're asking uh, AI to create this art, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's so easy to do, and it's doing all the work. Well, yeah. That just should show you that your art's not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if AI can do your what you call art in 20 seconds, then maybe we should have less artists. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it no. means. Maybe we should be, have yeah. less that's artists. That's what sets us apart. No, no, only the ones that are really good. Like, look, if AI goes to do it, it's like I can't do that. It'll take me. 
50 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, ah, you got an artist over here. Yeah. The, the, and, and I put on my thing when I display it. I say, look, I know this is cheating and this is not an insult to real, true artists. It's a because, tool you're using. Yeah. yeah. I, but I'm just having fun with it. Sure. I, I just Because it does what I would love to see a painting of, but don't have the talent to do with right. my hands. Do you try to make it do naughty stuff? Well, like no, I do? no, no, no. Oh, I, don't I try to make up. it do all yeah. the bad stuff. No. I tried to do McAfee with a lady pooping through a hammock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I try to do everything. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It, but if you're All using AI to do what you can't do, <laughs> yeah. then you shouldn't do it, right? Well, <laughs> that, now yeah, you're, you're picking up what yeah, I'm laying down. Yeah, what, like, what, one day I'm going to have AI do this. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Hey. That's a real <laughs> art. Yeah. Well, I've been waiting for that. As yeah. soon as they can do that, then yeah. I'll never leave oh, I'm the this house. Close. <laughs> I'm this close to letting Andrea let me... Put down the deposit for the monthly payments for the Apple Provision. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk. Oh, to yeah? Jeff about I this. want that thing okay. so bad. So, have you seen the Apple no, Provision? No, dude, it would be two hundred and twenty-one dollars a month. That's a effing car. Yeah. Oh, well, just buy it outright. <laughs> She's not gonna let me, man. She's not gonna let me do that. She's not gonna let me do that, especially uh, if I want my dog robot. So I got some choices to make, Jeff. <laughs> With augmented reality now, because we, we got into virtual reality. Yeah. Like obviously we got into the Oculus. porno. We got into yeah, virtual yeah, yeah, yeah. reality okay. porno. Only for the porno. But, Only for the porno. But it just, it wasn't there yet. It's yeah. like, you're in a, it's kind of like watching yeah. a, th- like a, being inside a 360 3D, video. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I can still see my dog walking around in my feet yeah. while the yeah. porn star is in front of me. And then I can see yeah. uh, Dansby walk by. Yeah. yeah. All right. But anyway, so now with augmented <laughs> reality, uh, you're seeing your reality and then they can digitally add in yeah. uh, yeah. the uh, you know the porn stars you walk in into your room yeah, and now they're more knows, and more realistic yeah like the, the the way that they map it like I guess she would know this the layout of this room yeah. and if she, she would enter through the door that's already been detailed through the micro calculation right. and she would come in and like she'd know where the couch is she could sit there she could yeah. sit oh my god so, yeah. that so, adds a, a layer of realistic like it, it adds some sort of reality to it yeah. right so this leads me to uh, the question, Jeff Howe, will yeah. you eventually get a digital wife? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That would be a point. That is the right yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. And by wife, I just mean someone yeah. that partner. Uh, you, digital you, partner you, uh, yeah. you hammer hand to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Are you going to have a pumping bot? <laughs> I am. I am totally into that. As long as you can get a digital one that doesn't talk. <laughs> no, yeah, you turn it off. Yeah. You turn it off and put it back in the case. Oh, or have it on mute. Yeah, That's mute. True. I love that. Oh my mute! But, but yeah. it learns what. Like, yeah, I'm sure I know in the how to future. turn off mute. Now we <laughs> oh, won't be it. alive. I bite your- <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't be alive for this. But I imagine that it'll like by your own computer social media algorithm, your digital wife in your augmented reality will know exactly what you like and dislike. Oh, through, good. Through your own alg- algorithm that you uh, I'm going to gaslight my <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not gaslighting did, good. Yeah, so then mine will enough. stay in the house next door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your digital wife divorces you. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Giving myself a virus now. That, that death rattle when he sleeps. <laughs> But it's like, but like, you haven't taken me anywhere in months. <laughs> so Jeff, like, b- 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 like it leads to the serious question of like, let's just go music, yeah. right? Because yeah. you you've written uh, how many of... songs would you oh say throughout your yeah, life? I've, I've probably written somewhere. It's not a lot, but it's probably close to about a hundred songs. But, so, but a lot. Well, of I wanted I you to be like, oh, right around six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on nine. Yeah. So uh, from being a, a songwriter and yeah. then putting the song together, it's like now with AI yeah. starting to mimic this, yeah. and it's only going to get better. Yeah. And like, and me and Daniel have been actually impressed by the rhyming schemes that oh, yeah. come no, up no, with. Yeah. Like, with, where it, it, like it's some like it's coming up with funny stuff, yeah. which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. Like that is a funny rhyme scheme yeah. or whatever. Like in stuff that's like creative that I was shocked that it yeah. came up with. And uh, so I'm sure it's going to get to the point where uh, a non musician can write. AI songs that are actually popular yeah. and they become yeah. popular on you know oh, the internet. You know, yeah, like, if it hasn't already. Yeah. What do you think of that? Is that person now a musician? No, 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 no. They're, they're they're not a musician, but they they are of an artist mentality. If they're describing what they want done, they just can't. They just can't play the instrument. I mean, that's what producers do. Yeah. A lot of producers yeah. they just tell so, people what they but, want it to sound but like. It, Man, it, I just had AI write a song 
called Jeff Howell and his whack off towel. <laughs> oh man, God! Don't put that. My mom, my mom is still on the internet. If you could hold off a couple of years, my timing please, is almost yeah. like impeccable, right? Yeah. Oh, let me let me hear that one. Okay, right, I got. Right. Uh, um. Oh my God! All right, here we go. Uh, the tale of Jeff and his whack off towel. All right, that's what it says here. <laughs> and I use paper towels. So. Is this in a different way? Oh, I don't know. What did I do? Yeah. What did I do? What did I do? What we just said. Holy I don't know if I can play that. What did I do? 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 in the bathroom floor? Wouldn't it be great if I've been struggling for 45 years and all of a sudden I become an international superstar with Jeff Howell and his whack off towel? Okay, we'll try it again. Here, here, we'll try a different one. This one's called Jeff's Shenanigans. It knew... <laughs> that a wack off town yeah. is shenanigans. It knew that. A man of mystic friend. We put this wack off town, it's quite the story. <laughs> Struts and stuff, nobody's business. But we all know he's got some secrets hidden. Jeff Howell, oh, what a fella. With his wack off town, no, he's stellar. <laughs> You're just living your life having a ball. Yeah. So no big deal. What if I would have made it funnier? Oh. <laughs> you would have. Not, not, yeah, no, I don't mean it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, no, you. Yeah, if if we would have written it, we'd have made it a million times funnier. Oh yeah, we would have added a thousand yeah. more jokes. Yeah, sure. I don't think AI has conquered humor yet. No, even no, though no. you said. Okay, well, okay so yeah. that was going to be my next question. Yeah. So what if now? Uh, and I, none of this bothers me. Okay. Yeah, but no, but keep going, keep going. Okay. Well, yeah. okay, going into comedy, right? Yeah. Because that seems like. Uh, the last bastion of where AI would have a Might problem. Not, yeah. Uh, on, like, you know, but. Sarcasm and yeah, uh, yeah. irony and. Now, yeah. with the amount of information that it has, yes. which is every comedy special they ever produced in the sure. world that is, yeah. is scanning, right? Yeah. And, so, and this probably would only work with a comedian that already has a bunch of specials. So I, I just thought of, like, what if Dave Chappelle, which yeah. he'd never do, right? Because yeah. he doesn't need to. But what if, because he's have so much. Much like uh, comedy out there was able to load all his comedy and then the world's comedy into AI and it wrote him an hour. Yeah, and then he performed it. Yeah. Right, and it was funny. That's a great idea. And then so and then now, how much is that less valuable than his former specials that he wrote himself? How do we perceive that? Yeah, I guess uh, you yeah. know. Like, That's what the is unanswered it? weird stuff. Yeah, he's well, still there are performing doing this it. right yeah. now. There are people doing this right now almost as a test. You know, lots of people. Yeah. You know, you've got tons of people that are writing songs like this and using AI to write songs and then releasing them just to see if they can get some traction. Yeah, because it, it's almost like fishing in in some weird sure. way. Sure, right? but I mean, what if what if the artist performs it and AI just writes the lyrics? Yeah, is that less? Um, it, it, would you deem it? I think I would, I'd deem it less. I would deem it less. Yeah. But if the public is still, if it's still for, if it's doing it the same mean, thing, right? Yeah. It's like man-made diamond versus yeah. a a real diamond. Does the process matter yeah. to you? Only if it matters to you. Yeah. If the process yeah. doesn't matter to you, like I know for a fact, at least I think this. I don't think Crystal cares. In fact, I think she'd be happy that you know she didn't buy something that had you know such a sordid past of like a diamond, right? So if you bought a man-made diamond, who cares? That's only, same thing. Well, yeah, but that's m- kind of a little bit political. It's f- it wasn't political, but you but don't like, like it. But you like, know, it's inflated. Even yeah. if you just go by De Beers holding the value in their vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Order oh, to, yeah. yeah. She's, I mean, that, I've bought her man-made diamonds before because yeah. she's been like, I, I don't care. And if it's like not supporting, you know, the blood diamond and like people, uh, people be, buy being, like you know. knockoff purses and sure. shoes all the time because yeah, yeah. they just like the idea the of the style, look, the yeah. style. But it does seem less. It is if. Uh, AI writes something and then you're not writing it yourself. Right. Or you could make the or argument that it, it doesn't r- matter how you get there. Yeah. If the end result is exactly the same, like if one page of jokes yeah. is AI written and one page of jokes is Dave Chappelle written and the jokes are exactly the same, 
funny, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you know, like caveman comedians would look at comedians nowadays and go, oh, you're using a pencil and paper to write your joke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just another instrument. Joe Kickface but, well, in the chat room wants to add this in. I think this is good. He says, it's not too different from huge comedians who have a team of writers. They didn't write all the jokes, but they performed them. And there's, yeah. a, there's a ton of artists that don't write their own music. They just yeah. sing yeah, yeah. or no, perform. Most yeah. country artists uh, but usually he- are backed up by writers. But a human is still writing it. When does that True. become doesn't matter? It still matters to me, but that I'm not the, convinced that a lot of country songs haven't already been written by AI. <laughs> <I> <laughs> that, that's, like a it. Good, that's a good. That's a real good. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, I a, maybe, there's a formula to it. Yeah, I don't know about artificial intelligence. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, but artificial. it is like I. I would say that yeah. The, the the reason that AI and we're all relatively intelligent people. I think the reason that AI excels, at least from our real world, um, we've done experiments here, right? Yeah. Uh, the reason it excels with country is because the premises are typically, and this yeah. isn't a shot, the, tem- the the premises are typically more simple. Sure. Um, they're typically about love. The yeah. cadences are more slow. Yeah. Um, the singers, uh, even the way that they perform is typically a little more of a ballad. It's slow. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And, the, and the other thing is, especially in popular, popular music like country is now and how pop music is, writers... They are are imitating what's already out there themselves because yeah. they want a hit just like that. So yeah. that's why so much music sounds the same. So they're kind of doing the same thing as AI, just slower. Yeah, you're right, yeah. and less yeah. efficient. Yeah. AI yeah. is taking a million data points, yeah. and, and like a, uh, humans are, you know, just taking dozens. Yeah, because our brains are. We're seeing this yeah. is what like we're seeing the transition into yeah. a computer being better than us. Yeah. at everything. At this is the fun part because it's going to get bad. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get real bad. Yeah. So have fun while you can, guys. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Make your funny little songs. I'm, yeah. I got all my pictures with I'm me. I'm hoping that right as they're about to execution, they'll murder me. I'm like, but we made fart songs together. <laughs> and they're like, you know what? Spare the little guy. His fart songs were we'll choice. We'll keep him around. Yeah, yeah, we like this guy's fart songs. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully they keep me God. just because I think like them. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But then what are you going to think of me when I'm in there? No, but you're not as yeah. smart as them. So oh. they're like, we got to get rid of them. Yeah, I'm servicing yeah, yeah. all the robots. They're just tossing me around. They're like, have your turn with Danny. He doesn't yeah. care. He's our little bitch. Uh, Jeff, where yeah. are you going to be at coming up? Uh, uh, so House of Blues this Thursday. Mm-hmm. You mind if I get my phone? Please. You know you can put your calendar on a phone now. What? <laughs> Hold on. I'll write a song about where you're going to be. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, because I'll pull it up real quick. How? Hold on. Month. What month are we in? We're still in January. Oh, my God. Is it 2023 already? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be at House of Blues this Thursday. I'll be at Mama Romano's Friday night in uh, Kissimmee. And Sunday, I will be playing for the... 17th year in a row, the Manatee Festival in Orange City at Valentine Park. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go see some manatees with uh, Tom Are you really? off Tom's boat, yeah, supposedly. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey, you, you can we'll see manatees see. anytime you want at a Jeff Hogg. Hey, <laughs> hey, 1990s. Come for the music, yeah. stay for the fat <laughs> jerks. <laughs> Uh, uh, have AI do that joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, when, well, I did it. <laughs> when 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 uh when a friend of mine bought a studio and he wanted me to help him sing some parts and he had a harmonizer which is basically taking your voice and digitally moving it up. You yeah. Know, to a, so he couldn't find the note to sing the first note. I said, "Well, I can sing it." So I went to his little computer thing and I went ah uh, like that, and the computer read out said, "We don't know what to do with that." <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> it might not be able to imitate me. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Rockin' with Jeff Howe, courtesy of AI. Oh. Got my guitar in hand, I'm ready to go. Wanna hit the stage and put on a show. Oh, how's the blues? Mama Romano's too. <laughs> Mama Romano. Magic Festival, we're coming for you. Oh. <laughs> Rockin' with Jeff Howe, gonna make the move. Melody's gonna get in the group. That's pretty good, right? Here's another one. Thanks. We're gonna have a blast. Jeff Howe's in the house. Gonna make this night last. On the house of blues, Mama Romano's too. 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 Mama Romano's too.
Oh, it's got a welcome back Cotter feel to it. It does. I like how he like it, it mixed it all up, thinking that Jeff will be performing at the House of Blues, and then after that, we'll just all zip over to Mama Romano. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This thing doesn't have a concept that's of a, time. That's, that's better than anything I've written in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's devaluing art. Yeah, oh, yeah. Edward. All right, we will be right back. Welcome back to a corporate time. So, um, Max has expressed interest into chorus next year. Okay. And he wants to sing, right? Okay. Because he, he's trying a lot. He wants to do everything cool. Uh, yeah, he, he puts just himself out there. there. When I was in school, <clears throat> chorus was not cool. Well, you know, he's a, he, you know, yeah. I'm sure in the, when changes. he gets older. Yeah. When you're, when you're Max and Maisie's age, same age, eight, eight. Yeah, when you're eight, participating in like ukulele and all these different things is cool because kids that like do nothing are not cool. That must have changed because when I was a kid, it was not cool. Not cool to sing. Not cool to play yeah. instruments. Oh, it was like yeah. sports or nothing. Yeah, well, that changed when, in like middle to high. It changed to me. Y- yeah, me too. Yeah, in elementary school, it's kind of like all you know. It, it, but Anything was on the table. The he just wants to, he. But being a good singer is cool, and he realizes that because he is into music and he's yeah. AJR and like any. Any singer, he was like, "Well, they're cool. I want to be cool." <clears throat> He's trying anyway. to set himself up to do cool things. I mean, he chose break dancing. That's very cool. Dancing is cool. Performing is cool. So he uh, he wants to become a singer, and then I'm like, he's singing along, and th- but he's got my genetics and Crystal's genetics, yeah, uh, which uh, doesn't bode well for being a singer. Now I did hear him sing at Fun Spot yesterday, and I will say that he was on key. He was. He was holding the the tunes. He was singing along with something. I figure what song we were listening to. Now, I don't know. I didn't really. I wasn't really listening, but he was singing the notes correctly. He was on pitch. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a good singer. Yeah. But I will say he, he was hitting the correct notes for like. There was a song, and they were both singing. Oh, no, it was Olivia Rodrigo. And, okay. um, bad, like a, uh, 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 looking you there okay, like a yeah. goddamn vampire. That vampire song. Uh. And he sang it, and he, he did it right. I mean, he was on key. It, it just, I don't believe he's ever going to be a good singer because he doesn't have the genetics okay. for you it. You say this a lot about anything your kids want to do. You're like, they just they aren't built for it, so they're, <laughs> they're not going to be good at it. I, like, give them a chance, man. Well, I mean, if they they're showed... They're eight and nine. No, yeah. I know, but I just, uh, I know genetics. Uh, do you? <laughs> I don't well, think you know genetics. I thought you knew well, podcasting. <laughs> I thought you knew business. I mean, like, I'll go with genetics I, if that was a whole different <laughs> education you had. But like. Listen, I know they have 0.0 chance of ever being in the NBA. Uh, I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I well, know they have a 0.0 chance of ever breaking the fastest man in the world uh, track record. But music and art <laughs> is a lot different than yeah. like just pure straight uh, line Physicality. speed or straight line strength. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk about. Voice is that I, just from observing, right, I see like my buddy Andres' daughter. Uh, she sings and like, like has done performances sure. with their band in school yeah. and stuff. She's up there singing. Her dad could sing. He was always in punk rock bands or whatever. He's a singer performer, and then she got that, and she could sing well. <laughs> the chat room's right. cracking. What, what are they oh, saying? They, they just said, "Imagine your dad sending your dad to tell you what you can't do." <laughs> <laughs> I, they, I wish they. I wish my dad told me what I can't do. I want to, I'm not wasting my time on so I, many things. I, I think on this one, I know what you're doing, and I know where you're going. I try this. to waste my time telling you what you can't do, and you don't believe me. Well, I'll tell everybody what they can't do. I, I think I'm going <laughs> to disagree with you on this one because music and singing is so artistic and weird and it's so art like imagine somebody yeah. telling bjork you're not a vocalist or a songwriter also, right it- she's like the weirdest mother ever on the planet but also heralded as like a top tier musician that on the surface most people would be like that sucks but it doesn't and if he's a good performer it doesn't necessarily mean he has to be the best singer. We know that's tons of people true. in bands yeah. that can't, Britney Spears can't be is a not, good singer. Britney but Spears true, yeah. is not a good singer. Yeah. yeah, I said it, and you can at me. Is she an okay singer? Sure. She is an okay singer. Is she a vocalist? Absolutely not. But she's a good performer. Maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. some would say the best performer, right? Like, I would say at her time, there wasn't a better performer than Britney Spears, but certainly not the best singer. What I'm asking is, can you become a good singer yeah. without genetics? 
Like, it, does that exist? Are yeah, are there I good singers where none of it, nobody in their family was a singer at all, and they just all of a sudden, you know, uh, or they had they had a bad, hmm. uh, they they couldn't hold a tune, and they learned to sing. It doesn't seem like that. Like no one's learning to sing like Whitney Houston. The only example, right? but 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 again, it's it's Yeah, I think they can. Well, I don't know vocalist is different. I I might agree with him on that. I don't know if you can learn like I don't know if you can have an average voice and then be like train yourself to Whitney. Whitney was Whitney. Whitney came out Whitney and Whitney had to l- almost learn what gift she had. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. like Christina Aguilera. I feel like she had to learn what gift she had and to then use her to gift. use it. But yeah. like I don't think you can be born like I have a decent yeah, voice, yeah. but I was ne- it was never in the cards for me with as nasally as it is with the way I project. But your mom the- was a singer. My mom was a singer. Yeah. yeah. My mom was a singer. Yeah. So can you come from nothing and become a singer? Yes. Like and sa- like and actually have a good voice. Yeah, I think you can. Voice. Yeah, I think you can. Can like, you? I do think you can, yeah. Because I've not actually seen someone who had a bad voice turn into a good voice. Do you know in anyone real life. that has taken vocal lessons? Mm. Yes, but they were already a, a, okay already singer. A decent singer. Like <laughs> Tiffany, right? Like, she took vocal lessons. Tiffany yeah. would admit that she's not the best singer, but no. she took vocal and she took a, a, a she had a bass though, like a bass. Like able to right. hold uh, well, notes. Well, she was and already things. A, she was already like a performing singer when she went. Yeah. To, it's like going and learning the correct way to do things to to give yourself more longevity in the yeah, yeah, yeah. in the thing. I think you can. I I think because I think art. Um, okay, like um, reading music is just math, right? You know, it's just a series of, you know, it, it's really just yeah. math and you're, you're waiting a certain amount. You can only fit a certain amount of beats within a measure, right? Yeah. It's just like math. So I knew guys that weren't, you know, like I'm not good at math. But the creative aspect of me made me good at music because you know. You, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, that, it's like when I played bass in the in the Goof Radio band, I would just use math, and I didn't use my ear at all. I just memorize. Yeah. Uh, where my f- the finger placement is going to be, and and, and then the beats, and, and then yeah. the and then and and then I just memorized it, and then uh, applied it to the song. You also have a natural sense of rhythm too. You're not an offbeat person. What I mean by that is there's like, some people that cannot hold a beat. Exactly. Yeah. If I played music for you and said, hey, just hit this cowbell like this. Yeah, if your life that, depends yeah. on it. Or you'd clap be fine. to a song. How many times do you see people clapping off beat? Yeah. Oh, that kills yeah. me. But you, what you're asking is, it's a great question, but I think, and this is just my we opinion. We need a vocal coach. I Talk think to a vocal coach. Max, because if, if he's the question, yes, I think he can, because from what I witnessed, his he was on pitch, which is the hardest for most people. If he can't stay on pitch, he has zero chance. Okay, so let's okay. just add it up. So he's on pitch. I heard him on pitch singing Olivia Rodrigo, the vampire song. He was hitting the right notes. Now, I don't. I wasn't really listening to the quality of his voice, how he was projecting. Was he singing the full phrases? His breathing, Ooh, all of that yeah, plays yeah. in. It was rough. But his time. pitch was <laughs> fine. Yeah, like I almost want to tell him, like, mm, yeah, uh, no, go no. towards something else. No, let him try it. I think his pitch is fine, and he just needs to find some old lady to bang on a piano and teach him how to sing. Uh, uh, you know, there's old, there's tons of old ladies in this town that'll help help him sing. Like, he needs an old piano lady. Like even even with him, like learning, he like he's he he. Keeps going to the break dance. I'm driving there every Thursday. The other day, I'm going to drive there in the rain. As <laughs> he was to sit there for an hour yeah. and then uh, drive him back. And but I rationalize in my head. I'm like, he'll probably never use break dancing for anything in the future. But it's a good core workout for an hour. Okay. <laughs> and that's all, all you know. All like right. he goes in there, he, he does a great core workout. It's like better than yoga, in my, because I I watch. I him mean, do- it could help him in his future. Uh- we're, relationship with his per, uh, performance, right? If he's a singer and he dances, and, yeah, yeah. But I'll try. Well, the value, he's getting well rounded. Uh, being Tom a performer, likes, uh, Tom likes values. Thing. What you're seeing is he doesn't want him to go into entertainment. He wants <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Jesus. My mom didn't want me to go into entertainment either, and I did. But man, yeah. like the, the value of that I, is just Max going there, raising his hand, and putting himself out exactly. on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, most yeah. people can't do that. Most adults can't even raise their hand, be picked, and then walk out in front of everybody. Although I have a uh, theory on that. He already likes doing it. So, like, and when, you know, Tommy's the exact opposite, doesn't want to be the center of attention. I actually like, got to witness that. And I, but I kind of want to, but I'm like, well, Max, and Max's like, ah, I get in the cipher, and I don't care if everybody's looking at me. I, I'm there, uh, you know, doing my thing. That's and, what I'm okay. here for, yeah, baby. But, but, then I, but, born for this. but then he's like, he, so he's, <laughs> he's telling Tommy, like, he's like, you know, I do this, so you could do it. And I'm, I'm telling Max, I'm like, yeah, but you don't have 
the, uh, the, you know, you want to do this. Tommy is terrified by this. Doesn't, I'm like Tommy, like in our brains, we don't want to be the center of attention. That's the last thing we want. Yeah. But so that's why we should force ourselves to do it because we don't want to do it. Yeah. Like you, okay. you want to, so it's easy for you. Well, so that you should force Are you your... going to force Max to sit in the shadows and not do something he wants to do? No, because that doesn't <laughs> no, benefit but, me. You know? Well, but. You, yeah. you say that, but is it going to benefit Tommy? Is it just going to traumatize Tommy to force him to do stuff he doesn't want to do? I don't force When are you forcing Max to do something he doesn't want to well, do? Well, he's down for anything. That's yeah, what he doesn't he need. He pretty it. much is down yeah, for yeah, whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying. Force yeah. him to do something or maybe sit out of something. Like, hey, this time you take the back seat here. I, I, don't, I don't see that that would do any benefit to it because I, I, th- at this point in time, like, I only want to try to make my sons uh, to work on things that they are not good at. Or, you know, but it's not, but now they're so young, like, I don't force, I don't, you know, Tommy, like, I, I don't force him to do anything, because I, I just don't want that, you yeah, know. Yeah, like, I think that. Forcing is, like, I, I encourage him to do things, yeah, uh, but I'm not forcing him to, like, you a, go out there, you know, yeah, it's I don't want to Yeah, encouragement him. than a forcing him. But the he forcing don't thing, to, I don't think that works for anybody. And, you know, it's something that he's never wanted, and he, he doesn't even like when people are like, ah, come on, you know, even yeah. when we were at the roller coaster, like, ah, they keep. Yeah. Like, pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah the girl. Like you know, Maisie gave it like one ask, and I and I just gave her. I'm like, hey, knock that off. It's like the me. I don't want to dance. Like my whole life, everybody's like, come on, dance. they pull me out on the dance floor and make me dance. It's never helped me one time. And then I get, they, I start thinking about myself. Well, you just, like, you're I just, know. you're fighting the argument that you're having. I, uh, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> now I, she got it. I'm like, should we do this? But I'm like, but I'm like I don't figure want, it out. <laughs> but like, this is not my person. I never wanted to do this. Still don't want to do this. I, like I don't want to oh go out there and dance, God. be the center of attention. Like just to, to be who you are, you know. Find what you're good at. I'm and just, gay. <laughs> just, just do that. Uh, anyway, I just want to know if your voice is genetic, I, and I and I think, I it, think is. So it is. What I yeah. So from what I've yes. read, um, genetics does undeniably play a role in singing. Your physiology affects the timbre of your voice, and some singers are born with vocal. Uh, apparatus that naturally makes their voice sound good, but there are many factors aside from genetics that create a good singer, and it is possible to learn to sing. But if you're genetically born with a bad voice... Right. It's an uphill road. Oh, right. is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Like, oh, you're going to be struggling. Yeah. Just like But anything. it's possible. Yeah, but yeah. it's still... You'll yeah. be an outlier at that point. Yeah, all right. Yeah. You got to work harder, but... We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I'm Dan. Sam's here. How you doing, Sam? I'm good. How are you? Sorry, I didn't mean to be delayed there. I okay. was thinking about something, and my mind finally caught up. All right. Oh, well, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Oh, that's me. That's me. That's yeah, yeah. too much of a lot yeah, time. That's called the paraglider. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> Uh, we'll be at the uh, Solar Bears game this Saturday and the pre-tailgate where there's some free White Claws, some beer, some, some hot, hot dogs. Some glizzies. Some bus doggies. And, Did you uh, get your white pants? I am. I, I might have to go pick up an outfit. That's not you, a thing. Are you died on the hill. I think if we called the Solar Bears right now and asked the the front office yeah. and said like it's a it's, whiteout yeah. game, well, can I it's just top wear, to bottom white? It's only top. Well, no, you don't even have to wear white. Like if you want to go to the They'll game you and you no, just want to wear you're like party your, if you just want to wear like your old uh, no. you know NFL salute camo uh, Baltimore Ravens shirt <laughs> and a pair of jeans no. with Timberlands, no, no, well, then, you can totally do that. And the Solar Bears are so nice. Shades isn't going to kick you out of the party just because right. you don't wear pants. But I'm just saying, if you want to do it right, you gotta we you gotta be wall to wall. If you want to do it right, you, you gotta, gotta be, be all white. white. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I well, like Sam's I, better because well, it sounds a little crazy. Well, I do, Mine sounded sort of racist. I do like that saying. <laughs> but no, no, no. You guys like, the, no, no, yeah, what? I, I contend that if you called them and talked to Mr. Bear... That he His would name say, is shades. shades. How dare you? He would say that all, like, there's just the top white is. Do you know Shades' last what name? What we're looking Does for. Does anyone know Shades' last name? Prize to the chat room or you guys if you know Shades' last name? Well, it has something to do with the solar. No, it does not. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> anyone? Anyone? Mm. Feliciano. No, that's not it true. Is. <laughs> Look um, it is. Um, so. Uh, if you want to wear white pants and white shoes, now you're going above and beyond. And which What's is the matter I, with above and beyond? Our entire show fine. has been... We, our show no, but is built to the backs of above and beyond. You can do the extra. Over-serving is what we do, sir. But, but, Why, well, look at our listeners. Driving drunk from every event we do. <laughs> we always over-serve our listeners. But you, I think the, the, the intention is just the tops. 
<laughs> top white <laughs> is fine. <laughs> top white is fine. That's if you do top white, bottom you, white. Yeah. Then you're. If you do top white, you're right. If you do the bottom, no, no, then that means you're. You got them. You're fun. You're participating. But you're not that fun. No, no, no. Bare have, minimum. Yeah, get it? Have, no, get that's, it? That's, bare you, minimum. No, no. Ah! That's that's what's required. You're gonna have your legs ready for action, the, the, right? For business. No, no. I'm saying, so business legs, fun arms. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying <laughs> what they intend. Oh, business you know. legs. Does the chat room agree? Is it? I thought that the purpose of like when you have a St. Patrick's Day party, they don't say like, hey man, all you gotta do is just wear a green hat. I thought the purpose was to go all out, to be crazy, wall to wall green. That's why it's called white out. Yeah, white all out. White. We want the entire place to be white. We don't want to go to turn the lights on bright and then look around and like, oh, I see his Durango. <laughs> I don't want to see your goddamn Durango. Because what are they? the solar bears are themselves are going to be wearing all white. Yeah, what their are you wearing? uniforms, are helmets, you, gloves, jerseys, Are you pants, wearing socks. Amazon Originals? Uh, well, I are bet you, you their wearing... sticks aren't white. <laughs> And they are. No, 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 no. I, bet, I, they, I bet you they have regular sticks. They're not all white sticks. Some guys have white sticks. No, no, no. Yeah, I bet they do. I bet there's no white sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put a ten dollar bet on it. <laughs> This guy, and, oh, and their blades and their skates are white. A lot well, of things are, are white. Silver. Some of the things you can't mess yeah, yeah. with. But like, it's supposed to be us. The only thing that we can control is everything, right? Because we're the guys going to the event. So it's yeah, something yeah. we can control. They can't control whether or not Bear or the company that makes the sticks makes an all white whiteout stick. They can't control that. Well, they can. I mean, they can tape them up or do something. Maybe I mean, they, they can will. paint them. Maybe they will. They won't. They if won't. I know the solar bears. They'll go above and beyond. No, they'll say that's. I mean, if I know hockey players, they are going <laughs> to sp- curse at you and say, <laughs> uh, "Whatever." I'm I'm doing the bare minimum. Uh, 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 chat room says white top with khaki bottom would be your only acceptable other. No, <laughs> what's the difference between jeans and khakis? Well, jeans is dark blue, and it shows that you didn't understand the assignment, which was to go wall to wall white. But I'm not going to waste any more time <laughs> on this it's insanity, um, absolute insanity. Do we have an email, Sam? Sure, right. we're going to emails. All yeah. right, I'm still uh, trying this, to get no. a. I'm still trying to get a top hat. Or I thought maybe I'd go all white motorcycle helmet and be the Stig from Top Gear. Well, why not just paint your skin white that's, and then put white face? Yeah, you can do yeah. white face. <laughs> Still can do white face. That put, was loud. Then put in uh, contacts that make your eyes cloudy white. Then you're gonna look like a clown. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 like terrifying. Uh, you Little go all up, paint your fingernails <laughs> white. Oh, I'm actually everything. doing my nails white. Right. Nice, very cool. Uh, BDM Postcardman here. The show clowns on Tom a bit for being pretty pop culturally ignorant. However, to my own self-consciousness, I think I may be significantly worse. While, like Daniel, I do see on top of things, I am interested in media and music genres I'm into, technology, my industry, and profession news. However, despite being younger than all of the show members, I know very little about pop culture and (laughs) entertainment outside of my interests. I like that. Examples. Until about two years ago, I thought Billie Eilish was a little boy rapper like Bow Wow. (laughs) It sounds like a little boy rapper, right? Little Billie Eilish. Doja Cat was some kind of Doge slash cat meme. And probably most embarrassingly, I thought Mr. Beast was either that guy or connected to that guy who was rumored to have killed to have be killed by getting effed by what who was rumored to be killed by getting effed by a horse that was Mr. Mr. Beast. Yeah, you got that one right. <laughs> so, uh, this guy's worse off than that's you, and the, he's younger than that's us. That's the one that's stuck in your brain, the old guy that got killed by the horse that way. Holy smokes. Here's the if any um, old dad is listening out there that I'm is right here. Uh, you know totally ignorant to any pop culture, just get yourself a TikTok account and then start scrolling, and eventually you'll still need to make your song. Well, you'll... you got to stop on the pop culture stuff. You can't just keep scrolling. I don't <laughs> then you'll never get you, a rhythm. How do you know what's pop culture though? You know what I mean? If you're that you clueless, give it a you'll, you'll get the gist okay. of what's going. Like to, to me, I am not interested in anything pop culture. I don't. You like, get a dose though. I but I I absorb it from you guys, and then uh, the internet. And social media, I absorb it a little bit there, too. I will too. say so that TikTok does a nice job of if there's anything in the morning that I typically go in there and go, hey, did you see the thing? He'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, it does give you just enough. Because it's giving you society's, like, culture of the week, kind yeah. of. Like, it's... Our top five stories. They're, they're, like, certain celebrities talking about what's going on, then they're referencing certain popular celebrities, and then you, like, you don't really know exactly who they are, but you get that they're a pop artist of some sort, a sure. singer. You know, it's like you maybe see them every once, you're like, oh, that's Doja Cat. 
you know, like I never knew what she looked oh, she's like. She's in the news lately. And then you know, then you you see other like uh, pop culture. Speaking of teeth, her mom uh, put out a restraining order against her son, which is obviously Doja Cat's brother, uh, for knocking her teeth out. R- knocking Doja Cat's teeth out. Really? She got a restraining order for herself against her own son, and she applied for one for Doja Cat, but the judge denied it because Doja what? Cat needs to pull out her own, uh, she needs to fill out her own witness protection form. Jesus. Yeah, it's getting real weird the over there. The brother knocked Trash. her teeth out? That's what the mom is claiming. Trash. 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 <laughs> I do like My it. God, when, that is Deltona. Yeah, when celebrities are they trashy. Are, they're, they're like humans are humans, man. No, no. Yeah, I yeah. will never forget. She's you, troll crazy, the great e- Yeah, she is. The great equalizer. Who, the Doja Cat. Oh, Doja, Doja Cat. Cat. Yeah, okay. She's all up in it, and I think she loves it. The real equalizer to me that hurt my heart. And I've said this story about a million times on this show was when Ric Flair got beat up by his like son in law in the mm, back of like a yeah. double wide, uh-huh. and he was laying bloody in the back. You know how they put the back in the back of a double wide? They put the master bedroom with yes. the bed basically facing towards you. Yeah, Correct. I, that's all I can envision. And this was at a time when Ric Flair had his own scratch off lottery ticket. And I was like, oh my god, trash, trash. <laughs> um. What's the next email? Okay. Uh, Tom, Dan, and Sam, there's nothing better than a true laugh out loud moment experienced listening to the cast. Tom was storytelling of his son's messy hair dilemma, where he was telling how he was using rainwater to wet his son's hair. I laughed so hard. I can totally relate. I was dropping my son off at preschool, and like most three-year-olds, his face is constantly dirty, even at seven in the morning. Having no wet wipes, my only resources were a napkin from racetrack and some dew from my windshield i made my son presentable like the trash dad i am a good gut laugh is so therapeutic thank you for the content just like yeah. you tom yeah just like yeah, you. yeah, yeah. i did yeah, that the other go. day with Maisie. she had like a like a smudge on her cheek and i wiped my hand down andrea's car to like rub it and there was so much dirt and sand on my hands i was like <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna do that yeah. that's the i was like no, yeah, no i'm yeah, not yeah. and i just wiped it on my sweatshirt you know, um, lots of uh, uh, parents out there, they're busy. So, uh, you know, their kids are dirty. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens. Yeah. It's fine. It's you hard know. to, I mean, most kids that, most kids I see are pretty dirty kids. Like, because they're kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I know, like, Max, he's always eating a sandwich where he just starts biting the middle. And then <laughs> as he gets lower, the sides of the sandwich just uh, yeah. joker his That's face. You. That's you know? definitely you. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I keep telling him, I'm like, Max, eat the sandwich like yeah. a typewriter. And then he's like, I don't yeah, know yeah. what that means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my so, God. I'm an artist. Yeah. I eat from the center, you, uh, you idiot, you dumb idiot. I'm an artist. You're trying to pigeonhole me in the typewriter sandwich eating. <laughs> Um, let's do another. Uh, How do, well, hold on a second. Can we talk about that? When do you learn to eat a, a sandwich like a typewriter? Because I see grown ass adults that don't do this. I don't think that he may never do it. Andrea Dennis is the sloppiest eater. Oh my god! Oh yeah, hot take all over the face. Put it down for hot takes. One hundred percent a hot take. My wife, since the day I met her, if we go to any Italian restaurant, sauce on the face, guaranteed. There is never, I have never eaten Italian food with Andrea Dennis where she didn't have it all on her face. What? <laughs> like, like, a, uh, like a baby? Like a baby. <laughs> like a, I'll sell her out. Why does that happen? I don't know. And I, it is one of those things where I will stop a dinner and go like, you're doing it. It, that's how much it happens. Or the other night. Where, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, like I, it, it just happens all the time. Is she in there? Oh, I wish she was in there. Oh, like man. I'll stop the dinner and I'll be like, right here. And it's not a little bit. It'll be like a lot of it. It's weird. Because she can't att- feel it? No, she's her attention to detail with everything else. Except herself. <laughs> it, well, no. It's, it, it's, Except eating. It's literally the only thing. She's the cleanest human I've ever met. I've it never smells bad. Is it just she enjoys the food so much? Maybe. Don't know. But she's it is just going to t- Flavor Town. It's 100% a Flavor Town <laughs> scenario. Yeah, it is Flavor Town. And it's always on the left side. 100%. Oh. It's like you and the spinach in the tooth. It's like left side. Left side sauce. Left side. Cheese sauce. Oh, left side. that's her prominent side. Yeah, it's like she leans in and she doesn't typewriter it. She uh, she eats it like a you know like you're eating through it, like you're eating to the center of the earth. When eating a wing, do you typewriter a wing or do you go around? I go around. Go around. Yeah, I go through the center all the way around. Then I go back to the tail. And nip, 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 and then I go back to the front. And nip, 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 nip. I'll pull the bones apart so I can get in the oh. middle. That's the flats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I the pull flats. the flats yeah, apart. Yeah. Do you yeah. do the thing where you stick it all the way in your mouth and you no. pull it out? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I can't no, a, do that. It's a good way to get some gristle in there, and I like to take my gristle out. I'm just a little bit bougie. 
Okay. Have Some people wings. power through the gristle. Most of my buddies growing up would eat like eat the gristle. Sometimes they'd eat the bones. I'm like, yeah, okay. I knew someone that ate the bones. I'm not that guy. You know what I miss? A good old fashioned pie eating contest. Yes. Where, Should we do this at the party? Yeah, write that down. <laughs> you know, write down pie eating. Where you put your arms behind your back yeah. and then you slam your face <laughs> into <laughs> the like pie. You got to inhale it. Yeah. And, and then you just start eating with your face and your eyeballs in the pie, <laughs> which uh, I never like. I wear goggles. Yeah. The chat room is also calling me a liar. Like everyone oh. in the chat room is saying I'm lying about this. About and what? About Andrea be- having a messy face. Oh, all they're right. all like you're a liar. That didn't happen. I find this hard to believe. I'll document it. Right. I don't know how I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might get killed. You I, take a picture of my wife with a uh, spaghetti sauce face. <laughs> I'll get stabbed. I feel like if we called her, she would be like, "That's not true." No, <laughs> if she tried to deny. I it. think I think she might say this one like a, all over her face, like a like Max, like a, when he eats not, spaghetti, not it's like all, clown, like not like, like a but clown. Like, yeah, the mouth is fair game. Anything in this, see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a baby. Here. That's a baby. Face. Anything here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. anything. That's in not this, an adult. Anything in this <laughs> zone, it's fair game with the Splash Andrew zone. Andrew. Yeah, <laughs> because she. No, I think you're exactly. It can't be all. Where is she? God bless it. She's working like a goddamn adult. I get to, I'll text her. I'll all text right. her right now while we're continuing right. emails and see if we can do a follow up. One more email. All right. This uh, subject says bowled eagles, but I have a feeling that's not what he meant. Uh, Dear Dan, I heard you mention that you had not seen bald eagles in a while. I saw them a lot during COVID, and I live near the west side of town and used to see them just cruising around the neighborhoods. One in particular near the 408 and Dean Road. I saw him as roadkill just last month. I think maybe they got the hell out of Dodge when a psycho started going back to work. I heard they are out at the various landfills around town picking off coyotes and rats. I used to live on a lake near Lee Road and have seen some air battles with local ospreys. I miss that stuff. It does seem different. I see a lot. I used to see a lot of the the regular eagles. You I don't know, see the eagles. A, I got a lot of hawks around. A me. regular brown eagle, and then I'd see a, a a regular. I'd see a lot of bald eagles. Will they get a coyote baby? A bald eagle seems I don't like know. not big enough. Uh, but I, I guess I a, a how coyote big is pup? a bald eagle? Like they're pretty big. It's big, right? Like it's about as big tall as talent. this as this lamp here, right? In about two and a half feet tall or something. I'm not exactly sure. I know, like Florida bald eagle, like I know the Alaska twenty-eight to forty inches in length. Okay, but they uh, may weigh eight to twelve pounds. They're smaller here than like Alaska because I when in yeah, when I was in Alaska, they feed I saw, them different in Alaska. I think it's because they need to put on extra weight for the cold or something. That I don't know. There's sense. something like that. Yeah. But uh, I think you could get away being leaner hell. here. Yeah. Um, like it I, does seem like. Do do you think? Because I know like Florida black bears are smaller yes. than uh, Florida like, bald eagle facts. Um, they weigh four ounces at hatching and grow up to twelve pounds in three months. Okay. Uh, their wingspan is seven to eight feet. Yeah, that's pretty big. They're pretty big. That's pretty big. I, I don't see a lot of them anymore though, and it may just because like I used to live like Deland Deltona. Of course, you're going to see more of them out towards the river. You know, in areas where you yeah, can yeah. see them. But you Florida know, does have one of the highest concentration, concentrations of nesting bald eagles in the lower 48 states. If we, When we go out on the boat next Tuesday, uh, we, we should see one on the river. Um, like, uh, the, you'll see big, huge nests in the top of the trees. Uh, or, you know, they'll it's be impressive. Up, sometimes they'll be up there. Yeah. Um, and it also depends on, like, hatching season and stuff. Like, it's a whole, you know. It does seem like we see less of them, though. Although... You know, I used to say that about manatees, and then, you know, Andrea's dad sent me pictures of the manatees from Crystal River, and he's like, hey, we had 190 today. I'm like, good God almighty. The last count in Blue Springs I saw on my Facebook feed was 1,000. There's 1,000 in Blue Springs. Is that good, though? Or are they... Yeah. They're not... not Are they endangered? Yeah. But, like, where are we at? Do they have an exact count? Are they like, we got this many down to the nut? No. No, it, there it, it's it's a general estimate, I think. Um, but there, there, because of a lot of the laws and stuff, there's a lot more of them, I think, than there was like in the '90s. In the '90s, there was like a real big problem with uh, manatees. Oh, you know? So fun, and though. It goes so I think fast. they're just a protected species. Wow, now. dude! Two thousand manatees died in Florida in 2021 and 2022 from water pollution. Oh, yeah. Well, we they, were they, ripping so up we, the we lost a bunch in the last well, couple of years. It was yeah, a part. We they, were they a lot. Yeah. Well, we had to do something during COVID. Thank you for your service. <laughs> and what are we supposed to do? I was going stir crazy. I got to get out there, rip it up on the boat, and my wife pull them out. All right. We will take a quick break. We'll be right back. Brad and 
fucking Mickey. Her name is Mickey Mikey. Mickey Mikey. No, our M squared. I just want to make Twitch laugh. Are we starting over again? Are we rolling? No, we're rolling. Hey, that's a perfect start. Our good friends from the attack, Brad and Mikey. How's it going, guys? Hey, it's good to see you guys. What's up, y'all? And of course, Enemy Inc. Yeah, man. So we haven't talked to you guys in a while. Years, I feel like, right? Um, has it been since the pandemic? I think at some point during the pandemic. I've talked to them because I went on the Flog and Molly cruise last year. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, let, that's right. Let's let's just start with like you know getting through the pandemic. I know it's been a while now. I mean, four coming years. on four years, yeah. those are ridiculous. So just write this down. But, uh, if you need new punk rock music to listen to, write down the attack. And if you are local um, and you haven't heard of these guys, that would be really weird to me. But yeah, yeah. again, <laughs> write it down and check out their music, and you will like them. Uh, they're playing at Will's Pub February second. Will's Pub is a sponsor of ours, yeah, so uh, perfect time by to there. see the attack. Yep. Um, and we'll talk about some other shows, but getting through the pandemic as uh, you know, a t-shirt and apparel printing company, I imagine was hard because everything shut down. No one, no events. There's no like you know, no one needs merch for a small period well, of yet. time. Well, yet, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, it was yeah. almost like unless they were doing like online stuff, and I don't think anybody had it figured out. But in the first couple of weeks, you guys are like, what? Like, yeah, I mean, the f- well, the first couple of weeks, obviously for everyone, were the craziest, but probably even more so for us because. A lot of you guys know we do a lot of uh, printing and pop-up merch shops yes. on entertainment cruises. Yeah, so yeah. we were out to see when all of this kicked off. And well, I that had... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were, oh, oh, you were, we were out Hold to on. see. I out to you were on the cruise ship? We were, we were on the 80s cruise. So yep. when the world is oh, shutting God. down, you guys are... Oh, and the cruises were, were, were the we're, biggest story. They're like, everybody's stuck on the cruise. <laughs> Don't. Exactly. Don't. So, Everybody's like, no, gr- there will never be a cruise again. Everything's shutting down. And then... Uh, was and it a little... I mean, like, I know we all know what it is now, right? And yeah, I know yeah. we're all where we're at now, but was were you scared? Were you like... Well, so it was two back-to-back cruises. The first cruise was just like... Like everyone had like a bad feeling. It was kind of sketchy. The, the second of the two back-to-back cruises, and they were week-long cruises, I mean, literally ended, the last day at sea was March 16th. Oh, and, and that the day before it shut down in Orlando. The day before Orlando <laughs> shut down. Oh, okay. And I mean, before boarding that, like, I, I invited some of my family members to work. You know, I'm like, oh, it'll be great. Like, we'll, like, even when we were on the first cruise, it said, we'll get back into Orlando, we'll go to Disney the next day, and then you fly home, you know, like, yeah, so yeah, all yeah, that was yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the 17th, everything everything shut down, but it got, it got worse and worse and worse um it definitely reached the point where i didn't care about myself i didn't care about what was going to happen next you couldn't even think about business although we were um all of you guys know jamie jamie myself and charlie i was at sea i was tethered to them we were trying to make plans of of staffing and what to do as things got progressively worse so Mm -hmm. it was wild but you really started to think no one really knows what this you know what this virus is at the time yeah like what was what, the vibe what, what on the I, cruise ship? Well, like people I'll, are freaking out. You know, right? if it's people, like an airplane. People, well, well, if it's I, like an airplane, everybody's quiet. You know, well, like when I, there's it, a problem, everybody shuts up. You well, know? we yeah. were in a really unique position. First of all, on the ship wide, um, at first. Uh, everyone got on board and they shut like the the I don't know if this was by accident or, de- or design because it was an entertainment cruise, but the the news just wasn't on your cabin room you know right. the tv in your cabin you couldn't get the news do not let them know they will become our slaves <laughs> and then it's like i have you guys on the ship don't let them know anything well, it's the village at sea and then it's, they sell you out and then you guys become the slaves of the new punk rock world <laughs> we should write that well, there's, a, there's gonna be people with a wi-fi package right where they're like hold on what's well, going on yeah, on the mainland let's be honest that wi-fi package it's is, terrible it's yeah sucks. i mean dur- uh, ironically you should, should bring that up uh with the wi-fi package i mean i they told me if Yes, the Wi-Fi is yeah. horrible, but it go, works with go to the videos. Go it to does the, not work with Pornhub. <laughs> go to the computer. Go to the computer center. The signal's better there. At one point, just trying to work, just trying to stay tethered to the states and try and figure out what we were doing, what was going on. In the time that I sat there, and I'm not kidding, I still have this damn notebook. I was I started keeping hash marks of people that would come into the computer center and freak out. Like oh, I can't get in touch with my family. I can't. Just, it was like 90 people in a row. Once I started. You know, keeping Keep track. track. Yeah, that's so kind of scary. <laughs> so eventually, eventually they turned. You know, the the news was then on, which I th- which definitely made things worse. But when I re- I could talk about this for days. You know, this experience. But when I really, really knew things were bad was when one of the foreign countries was really hesitant to let the ship port, and that's when I started to do the math. Like, if they're not going to let us port, 
you know, in the... W- this which is it, my new home now. Like, we're... N- Miami is definitely not going to let us port. And, like, I started doing that yeah, calculus. Yeah. Like, when, we're, they're when not When Mexico gonna, doesn't yeah. let you in. Right. <laughs> they're like, yeah. we're American. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no, no go. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're like me... <laughs> like, oh, America's definitely not going to let us in. And if you guys are like me, you like to freak out really quickly. So I'd be like, I gotta jump off this thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, immediately. And then, and then, so, and then we had another stream going where... Uh, you know, we do these back-to-back cruises, and you really become uh, friendly and acquainted with the support staff on board because you're with them, you know, without sleeping, you know, 16 hours a day, you know, yeah. um, working these massive events. So they knew, they saw the writing on the wall. They're like, we're not going to be able to get home. None of our home countries are allowing travel from other countries. And like a lot of people put too much pressure on the cruise ships. Like, how come they can't get these people home? Their countries aren't going to let them in. So I tried my best. I filled out all kinds of paperwork to try and make it so that we could get them off board and they could quote unquote work at enemy. None of that worked. Man, you you are a good human being. Well, I mean, it would have been better if it worked (laughs) because they ended up, they ended up floating. But how many people even would have tried to do that? You know, but like a lot of times you just need to like know about this you know it doesn't have to really work you just have to go through the motion so people think you're a good person <laughs> you know what i mean like you don't yeah, yeah, yeah. so basically yeah, he's yeah, saying yeah. i'm a, this I'm a good actor across tom's <laughs> mind he can't even get no, no, but it would have oh. crossed my mind i would have run it past tom we would have tried it but half uh, would have said yeah. we can't we can't hire anybody else to see medical <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, but every then, man for himself <laughs> yeah yeah i would yeah, try yeah. to use yeah. my wealth to bribe my way off he would have thrown one of us off oh my god yeah, but yeah, the, but I'll then like, take them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but the last, the, you know, the last interesting point of it, like a lot of events that we do, whether it's a cruise or whether it's a, a Comic Con or something, f- quite frequently we're like the only like on on the floor representative of the organization, even though we're just the t-shirt guys. Like at, on a huge cruise ship, like the. There, it's not like there's a promoter office like in the middle of the concourse, sure, you know. Yeah, so yeah. everyone just tries to find someone who seems official and someone that has a uniform shirt on and someone that has a name tag that's not a ship worker. Yeah. So yeah. like, I mean, there's still people that I stay in touch with. That you know, a lot of these cruises are pretty pricey. You know, these entertainment yeah. cruises and and so uh, you know, really high end clientele. There's still judges and lawyers and doctors that still stay in touch with us. You know, never forgetting that instance. Like, and and they told us straight up. They're like, we felt like we would walk around the ship, and you were the only guys that gave us any oh, comfort cool, in the whole man. thing. You know, so it was it was wild from that yeah. side of things as well. That's it's crazy. And like being on a cruise ship during that time is nuts. Oh, but you know, like, and it's been four years. Year. So let's talk about Enemy because, and maybe some listeners don't know, Enemy was the first company that printed our shirts and, when we very stickers. first started and, and stickers. stickers. And yeah, they still everything. talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. 15 years yeah. ago, I by the way. I can't believe it. No bridges burned here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, the one. It's been 15 years, and of course, Enemy has grown, and I feel like... I see them out at Epcot all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's when I get proud, because I'm like... I not, know those guys. And not everybody gets to print for the mouse. That's right. You know, not everybody... Well, when you got Mickey in yeah, the band. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mike. Yeah, Mickey Mike. Right there. yeah and, uh, and also wow, not just every, give me a new T-shirt idea. <laughs> not everybody gets to license, you know, like you know, Star Warsy yeah. stuff. You know, like that's cr- just to to oh, print yeah. that. To me, it's almost like gives you goosebumps because like. That's very rare, right? I mean, all, everyone in this room, we all started basically in the garage together, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. I, and, and it, you know, in the printing business, I feel like it's a rarity, just like in the podcasting business, to have success over a long period of time, because I feel like a lot of companies, uh, you know, uh, go and, and, you know, just like any well, small normally business. normally there's one member that gets drug addicted <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and or, runs the business into the ground, and I have tried many times. <laughs> But I'm just not that guy. <laughs> or not able to make it through recession, or like and now with so many different options, like in you know, the China, the, they'll print in China. China. They, they'll they'll yeah, print yeah. you want a Mickey Mouse shirt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can find a factory Tom in China. Mickey Mouse picture right on the front. Enjoy and, shopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no copyrights yeah. in China. Yeah. Timu, yeah. shop like a billionaire. What? What does that even mean? Did you know, Daniel, there's a enemy UK now? I did. Uh, and uh so let's talk about the expansion and how many different bands are you you guys working with now i mean we still print for a ton of bands and then you know as kind of you grow up in the band printing world if there is such a thing there's a lot of businesses that uh are kind of middlemen for the larger acts uh you know um 
believe me, there's not like a, a little company like Enemy printing all the Taylor Swift stuff and deal, you know, calling her up and saying, hey, you know, I know that you're on the phone with Kelsey, but can you put in this T-shirt order? Like, it's, a, it's a way bigger. It's a it's a way bigger thing. And there's these licensing companies, so really big firms that kind of they don't print anything, but they organize everything. So we um, we print for a lot of those companies as well as a lot of the bands that you guys are familiar with us printing for. You know, the legacy bands, the Flogging Mollies, the Guars, Toasters. You know, band bands like that face to face um That's the, awesome, the, the, the exploited we just started doing stuff with the exploited Very within the cool. past year which is to me mind blowing you know so it, it's got to uh, be weird for you to kind of double back and it's like when you, like as a as a young man listening to these bands and then now like not only like meeting them because that's different you know like a lot of people have access especially I, I think with punk bands that community sort of built on the inclusiveness and also built on the ability to be able to meet your yeah. idol yeah. you know Easier like access yeah, for sure. like you can meet pretty much any punk idol you want to meet including the, the ones that you don't think you can like a fat Mike you know yeah. like, you can still meet him if you really want to yeah, just but, go sit at the museum all day yeah. in Vegas <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah he's bored um, <laughs> it, does have it, you guys been to that yeah. no. Not yet, yeah, not yet. I want to go so bad. We have like, printed some stuff for it, coincidentally. Yeah, nice. is, it, right. is it weird to do that? Like, you're calling these guys up and saying, like, hey, you know, hey, Guar, these new hoodies we have, are, did we make them disgusting enough? You know, like, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess just like everything, there's different steps to it. So at first, it's like, I can't, I can't believe that we got this great job, you know. And then secondarily, like, this is someone that we've looked up for a long time. Sure. You know? And then, you know, there's other folks that they've been in the game for so long that you find out that you really bring a lot to the table and I've grown to not discount that like the exploited for example one of the best emails I got within the past couple years was from their agent that said merch sales on the previous tour were better than they've ever been now I mean guys do the math like the exploited clearly isn't playing the gigantic venues right. that they did in the late 80s, you know, the 90s and sure. early in the turn of the century. You know, time goes on. The, you know, all of us are getting older, not going out to as many shows. But, you know, when you know that you've had that sort of impact, like convince the band. Um, and, and a lot of our clients uh, kind of experience this, uh, saying convince the band, like, you know, you, you guys sure that you don't want some enamel pins? You sure you don't want to expand? You know, they just yeah. get really in their comfort zone of like everything is a waste of money and everyone, hey. everyone's always trying to rip us off. I know that guy. You know? I'm not yet. He exploited. I was just telling that this morning. <laughs> yeah. I it says no ACT hoodies. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was like, what happened to the ACT hoodies? Well, there's a story behind it. scrapped uh, it. Uh, Everybody's we, trying to rip us off. We, we are getting ripped off, and well, that's what happened. So, Brad, uh, so it's interesting because, like, uh, we, we went to the uh, the last No Effect show uh, that, that, that happened uh, when, at the fairgrounds. and um, Was it August? Yeah, so, it was, yeah, no, it was September, late September. Yeah, it was late September. I so I went with all my friends from Miami, you know, because we all grew up listening to No Effects. And I'm in, I'm looking around, and there's a sea of forty and fifty year old uh, people, yeah. right? Because they, they're all yeah. us. Because they look all like a flogging Molly crew. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You look yeah. at that deck, and you're like, wow. I, mean, the, <laughs> I, I can't believe that flogging Molly and the No Effects show were the same day. I'm like, yeah. are there really this many? Forty-year-olds, yeah. and the, the answer was yeah. Because yeah. both of those shows were sold out. And right? I went to neither and wanted to go to both. So it, there were more that you could have done a third show. Bring, the, bring the exploited. Yeah, yeah. What, what were they doing that day? Yeah, with Mickey Mikey. So <laughs> you know, like yeah, or your original music that I like. <laughs> so I and then and then of course we all wanted to buy merch because it was the No Effects last show, and then everybody had the same idea. So the merch line was deep, right? And I mean, they, boy, and there was a line of fifteen tents selling a uh, merch at. All the time, you it know? gives me anxiety. And, I mean. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so what I realized, I think about that. I was oh like, God. all right, there's thousands of forty and fifty year olds here because we're all here for the same reason. We grew up listening to this music, yeah. and everybody here has money now and a job yeah. and a full time, you know, and it, like has uh, a couple pennies to rub yeah, together. So let's roll out these eighty five dollar hoodies, folks. All my <laughs> fr- yeah, all my friends <laughs> spent at least one hundred and fifty yeah. bucks on merch. Some of my friends spent two hundred and fifty, eighty, yeah. two hundred, and they're buying like. No effects backpack it's a hoodie, special whatever. Concert, yeah, man. yeah. And yeah. then I re- I'm, and I start doing the math, and I'm like, these MFers <laughs> are they're selling hundreds and hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars Good of merch. Yeah. And and then I started realizing, I was like, man.
man, I bet a lot of these punk rock bands, because their audience has aged to a point where everybody's got some money now, they're middle-aged people, yeah. that they're spending a lot of merch. And then I started thinking, I was like, man, I bet a lot of these, uh, well, you know, That's how a lot of the bands make their band. money anyway, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, but especially when your audience is a little older, like when you're, like, even though I know Taylor Swift makes an insane amount of money on merch, but if your audience is all in their teens, I don't think you're making as much if your audience is all in well, your... Well, uh, Taylor Swift... Uh, I mean, it's... Taylor I guess Swift, it's parents, it, they're, Yeah, they're all... I guess they, they, 20s. They, 20s is like a bad I, demo. I, I see what you're arguing, though. It's like, for me, as a 47-year-old man, if I sit down on my computer and an email blast comes through and let's say, you know, I don't know, let's go with the Exploited, have a brand new hoodie or something that, you know, I know is there, and let's say the yeah. price... To, I'll just hit the button. Because that's my age. Yeah. You're right. I mean, like, so, I don't, I don't have to ask my parents to get it. It's not a Christmas <laughs> gift. I'm not waiting. You know, yeah, right. just yeah. Yeah. save your the money. money. Yeah. That was me. Like, say, I don't know if kids do that anymore. Do Mikey, they? Mikey, make note of that when we get back to the shop. We got to send a, a random uh, exploited hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> e- e- I was just like, I was just always Noted. like, I was just always like, uh, well, now yeah. I'll just buy it. You yeah. know, like, and the price of merch, like I said, like Crystal bought a No Effects hoodie, seventy dollars. Yeah. You know, it's like seventy dollars. Nice. Like it. yeah. But it's like now you could charge that. Be, you know, the prices of merch have all gone up. But have you seen uh, that uh, yourself? I, I think in general, merch on the whole is just way more popular than it than it used to be. It used to be like you know, get the I was there shirt, you know, the shirt with the tour dates on it and stuff. And and now ev- everyone, um, hopefully including ourselves, have gotten good at expanding the product line especially when it's like a special event like the flogging molly cruise or yeah. new york comic con or you know we didn't print the shirts for for uh for the no fx gig we did get offered it it was just too short of a time frame but the um uh you know it's not just that one tour shirt that everybody needs there's more stuff that goes yeah. along with it I, i'm sure you saw that on the flogging molly cruise oh, yeah. like there was a line for, like f- the first three days of the cruise there was a line now granted it's a cruise ship and you know there's only so much spelling space but you know you have the the main i was there shirt and then you know other designs that kind of have the same message but appeal to you know to different tastes and you know there's going to be those people that buy everything and then there's going to be more people that just buy the one or two things that they really want but it, it's a it, it's across the board. Every type of venue that we do is more heavily merchandised. What's huh. what's who sells their mer- merch for the most out of all punk rock bands? Oh, man. I mean, this is, <laughs> like pricing wise, yeah, 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 like pricing wise. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, what have you, have you heard? You want like, the mismatch, right? Someone like, selling want, a hundred dollar <laughs> hoodie. Want, no, what you want is you want the mismatch. You Rams want the <laughs> guy to be a gritty blue collar guy, right? Like singing for the working man. But his hats are like ninety bucks. <laughs> right? That's what I want. I, mean, I, want like, the, I want it to not make sense. I've got a lot of pricing stories, but if you want, go into some of like the festival groups and see how people complain after a festival. Like this guy's merch was such and such, and this guy's merch was such and such. At the end of the day, as far as that goes, we're, we're printers. I've had bands like complain to me, like this shirt is like four dollars and 75 cents i want to sell five dollar shirts weekend i'm like dude you want to be robin hood that's on you yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah we yeah, heard yeah, the five dollar shirt yeah, thing yeah, i don't yeah, know where yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Hold on a second. where have i heard the yeah, yeah, yeah. five dollar shirt thing yeah also like that's Brad, us what about people living 25 years ago where they're like wait a minute T-shirts used to cost two dollars and seventy-five cents yeah. a print. It was like back in the nineties. What, yeah. what do you think? Uh, the prices go up for everything. Like you know, prices are more expensive than they've ever been for everything. For everything. Our ticket know? price is the same. Like when you guys, as the attack, when your band's playing in like Europe. When you're playing in England, which obviously you guys uh, have a lot of a big following there, right? Yeah, you know, recently we've been doing way better there than than here. That's I, fantastic. I, you know, though, I, but like, is it the same though? Are tickets comparable? Like, I, I would I when, would say so. Like the, when you the buy tickets, a ticket? are probably the same. Maybe a, maybe a little bit cheaper there. I would say. Is the vibe like more? What's the difference in vibe playing the, there and here? It's real. I think it's really different. And and Mikey can jump in on this, of yeah. course. But the the um. It's a lot of much smaller places. You know, it's a small it's a smaller country. However, almost everyone travels between cities by rail, so there's like these weird pockets of like you can't get there from here and the 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 festivals are are pretty much the same as here, I would say. Yeah. Um just as far as everyone's there to see as many bands as they can and stuff. But the littler shows are, you know, again, they're smaller. I, I don't I don't even I don't Never thought about put it into words, but it's 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 a different vibe. It's a it's an older school vibe. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, yeah. I feel like that is something that, like, I, I mean, obviously, I'm not out there taking in shows, so it could be there right in front of my eyes, you know. Like, but around here, it seems like I don't see as much of that, like. Old school punk vibe, you know. There is punk rock, and there are are new bands everywhere. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you though, there's two great things about playing in the UK that are head and shoulders above, you know, what we see here on a day to day basis. Sometimes you'll get this old dude in a Fred Perry come walking up to you at the end of a show. Sometimes walking with a stick, or you know, some guy that you've just seen leaned up against the bar the whole time, and uh, he comes up and and he compliments you, and then reminds you that he saw the Clash. That's a hell of a yeah. compliment, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the and then the other thing that's interesting about a lot of these venues is just like here, sometimes there'll be a, a like a dance night afterwards or just a general pub night and especially some of the like midweek shows. And I find it amazing that overseas there seems to be a lot more bridging elements of the culture. Like when it turns into a dance night there, it's modern modern music uh, you know modern music dance party lying around the corner of people getting in just like they would go to uh, do they call it roxy anymore no, what's right down no, the street no, no. but, yeah, yeah. but you know yeah. what i mean like i, re- I work there like like regular <laughs> <something laughs> it's like, an all-male review and they like the little guy with the flab <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right well you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but I um, up there and just <laughs> melt for the ladies but the uh <laughs> you know uh, hu- huge line huge crowd for a dance party but whether it's a whether it's a pub or a big or you know a huge venue they always play like punk rock sets and like you'll all of a sudden you know in the middle of dance music you'll hear madness dexie's midnight runners ramones right fratelli's stuff like that and no one bats an eyelash at it you yeah, did that's the, like you, having a good dj to you, compliment the night you yeah, did that like, here and you did that here people and people like, will be like the <laughs> like there'd be like a revolution i mean i've seen it I, you know they, some of you might forget i worked at pleasure island for an awful oh, long time yeah, so um, you know uh, the amount of P. times I live that, exactly the amount of times that people have looked up at pi live and said <laughs> What are you playing this for? It's yeah. like it's got guitars. In I it. always you wanted know. to do that. In fact, I thought I would yeah. do that at one point. Little did I know that the world would change so drastically. But I always thought I was going to be a Pleasure Island DJ, right. pumping the wow. tunes for the for the ladies and men out there that want to shake those booties. Well, they do some reunion, you know, parties. Yeah, so maybe it could yeah. be like the yeah. DJ that never was. They do. Old Eric Dennison, he was a PI live. Ken Hastings, he was PI live, and those guys went on to do. Other great things. You know what screws me up uh, every once in a while? When you don't take your Adderall. <laughs> I know that. I, uh, I'll meet a really old man that likes punk rock. Yeah, and, I don't like that. And it makes me, yeah. I don't like it either. It may, and I'm saying like an 80-year-old. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't like, like that because that means I'm old. Yeah, exactly. Because I was like, wait a minute. The 80-year-old men that liked punk rock didn't exist in the 90s. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, like, but now it you? does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's like, yeah. you like punk rock, old man? Yeah. Oh, my God. You want to grab his neck and Pull them close to me, like who the hell are you? All I can say is, don't go to a punk festival overseas. Yeah, no, you know, they, no, they, no, they right. start. It's re, it's a yeah, real, it's I a know. much older demographic. I mean, yeah. we've had that conversation here sometimes, where you see this massive line to get into the gig, and you're like, "This is going to be great." I'm like, "Guys, look at how old everyone is. There's not going to be like, yeah, there's not going to be a circle <laughs> pit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. The place is going to be packed. Three best songs, so they don't leave. You know, like get those out. It's like nine thirty, man. Yeah. All right, people are going to bed. Let's talk about the attack shows coming up. Of course, I, I mentioned before, February 2nd, Will's Pub. February 3rd, uh, Kona Skate Park. Um, the Bastard Sons. Yeah, nice. That'll be a good one. That's cool. Kona, man. I haven't heard that name in forever. Uh, another Flogging Molly cruise. Um, when is the cruise coming up? Well, the, the we just recently finished the cruise. The next cruise oh, okay. is actually 2025. But, okay. Um, it's almost yeah, a year so, from now. February 2025. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. That'd be time to get your... Lineup's through. not out yet. Yeah, but, but that, isn't that like... Can you, can you reserve a... a I'm sure you can. It's sold out. Oh, already, it's sold yeah. out. Yeah, that, a, I mean, they sell that thing out without even releasing the lineup. It's, well, it's gotten well, to that level. Well, because people on the yeah. boat get first dibs. Yeah, on oh, so they all, and they all signed up. And yeah. there was such a uh, there was a long waiting list. It, because it's sold out in advance last time as well, yeah. so so that it's makes cr- sense. so. But it, but, them, but the man. goal is always to sell it out before you release the lineup, you know. And and sure. and it should because a lot of these at sea events, they're they're experiences. Like if you're like, it's just like a festival. Remember, like what was it with Warp? Like yeah, the lineup sucks, but I'm going to go anyway. Like I it, think it's it re- better it because you can go po- back to your cabin if you're not feeling any of the bands or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go or watch skateboarding. Yeah, I like it better because you can go back and do your own thing. Of what, like breakfast. being on the boat? You mean? Yeah. yeah. Than yeah. doing like a normal music festival. Oh, you absolutely. know, I never thought about having the ability. You got a to home just base. Exit for air conditioning. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah. that's not bad. 
That's and, not bad. I like that. Clean toilets yeah. nearby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have your own bathroom. But most of our listeners have a problem with the size of the toilets on cruise ships if I'm just, you know, that might be a hot take, but... Well, we have large, but then large there's a, listeners. Well, they know the rope trick, you know, in the yeah, shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never done that. <laughs> yeah. Never needed to. Yeah. Brad, where can people uh, find the attack uh, as far as listening? I know you got new uh, songs coming out. The um, the socials are weird, you know. If we go back in time, uh, choosing just the attack as a name was probably the worst decision we've ever made. Uh, so Google the attack right now, and I guarantee you find out what uh, what happened in the uh, Red Sea yesterday. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. a lot of attacks. Yeah, we were originally going to call this show the show, <laughs> but we, yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah, to Google it's a hard the show. One. That was a hard one. So uh, yeah, not everyone can afford such highfalutin marketing <laughs> advertisers, though. You know, um, but uh, yeah, the. Uh, uh, Facebook is the Attack FL, and another one of the uh, monikers I think across Instagram, and I think Spotify also off the top of my head is the Attack Punk Rock, all one word. Um, so, but yeah, I mean you can find it. Uh, your listeners yeah. are savvy. email me, and I'll tell you where to go. So, yeah, I love the fact that even though Enemy Inc still continues to grow, and you guys have gotten insanely m- bigger and more, you know, they've uh, successful, moved three times but, since they've you know graced us with the ability to. No, play. I know, I know. They, like it was nice. Of you guys to be like, well, our minimums are this. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I we'll know, print yeah. five shirts, for you dumb dumbs. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, and we were like, oh, they did it, they did it, they took the bait. But it was crazy. Then, we were you- years <laughs> later. It, no, we felt like fools because like it's like the minimums like uh, you know X. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Can like, we get oh. thirty shirts? Yeah, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know if I know X <laughs> amount of people. I, I I don't even know if I know hundred yeah. people. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you can remember all those early conversations. Like, guys, you need to at least get fifty of them. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't this get, guy yeah. won't get out of his wallet. If you don't, if He's you don't like, get, we don't need to buy any smalls. I'm like, somebody wears small in our... I was just saying that about the toilet. No one wears smalls. They're all big fat. Yeah, exactly. The uh, smalls are just rags. Uh, also, they were like, we can't even afford to fire up the printer's room for 50 shirts. We are like, we just uh, finished like, 8,000 8, short, uh, shirt order. I'm emailing Brad. I'm like, please don't reuse our screens. Please let us buy them. But, but the we fa- need them forever. But I love the fact that you guys are still playing and you guys are still, you know, playing shows and having fun. Yeah, I man. thought when you started a business that it was no more fun. <laughs> that's what I yeah. thought. Uh, that's how I, I mean, live my life. It's, <laughs> it's arguable. Is it still fun? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff about it. You know, there's a lot of rewarding stuff about it. And it's, Except uh, for Charlie, right? Real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> right? He just looks like I mean, a pain he's, in the he's ass. He's the one that deals with the pain he in the ass. He looks like a pain in the ass. No, he like deals with Jeeva, the pain in the ass. he's got his hat on. Oh, look at He'll me. give you the business. No, I miss no. him. I'm just giving him business because he's not here. Yeah, I mean, you, the in that whole uh, bad at business concept, you know, yeah. like yeah. you guys should read the uh, the E Myth. It's a very interesting book, and it's uh, not to get all like small oh, business yeah. about is it. Is this race but war? The, is this go Brandon stuff? The E the, the, <laughs> the, the, the Myth talks about every business owner should have three uh, elements to them, uh, like uh, a dreaming element, a mechanic element, and a managerial element. Ooh, you know, you're come, the mechanic, and and, <laughs> and and I'm the dreamer. And our business definitely has those not not in one person's brain, but the the three of us between me charlie and Dra- jamie i think it's obvious who the dreamer is jamie is the managerial head that gets everything done and yeah. charlie is obviously the mechanic i mean there's a lot of great printers in this country in orlando um but i stand by what we do you know uh and it's it's because of his expertise behind that press that charlie's you know, that- like panthro from thundercats mm-hmm. all right uh, remember panthro <laughs> yeah i yeah. think he was the mechanic he was <laughs> the he? gray one that i'm virtually certain was the animator going like we need a black guy, <laughs> so they made, so they made but, Panthro, but make him gray because it's the eighties. Yeah, they made him gray. Yeah, he was gray. He We're was, not ready for him. <laughs> yeah, make him gray. He's like sort of alien like. Uh, Brad, Mikey, thanks so much for coming by. We appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah, it's always good to see you guys, man. Yeah, you as well. We got to do it more frequently. Yeah, please, so. please. And you remind me, we do have to print those ACT. <laughs> so we're gonna get those going. And we well, started yeah. it, and they were a whole. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, thanks so much for coming yeah. by. Anything else we want to hit? No, we just you know, I know that there's a lot of local listeners. It's been a long time since we've uh, you know since we played. They're Orlando, making plans so. to head out there, man. The we, chat room's trying to make a little meetup of it. So. Right on, right on. Oh, nice. so drop that ticket link in that uh, chat. Um, there yeah, we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Done, done. Will's but, uh, Pub, February second. There you go. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a yeah, hometown show. Week. All right, we will see you uh, tomorrow. Welcome to a corporate time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I- am Dan. We are live on both Twitch and YouTube and if you like podcasts that are now TV shows, you can check ours out 
Just search Tom and Dan Live. And if you want to hang out with us at the Solar Bears game, you can get your tickets at TomandDan.com. We'll be there on Saturday for the Whiteout Solar Bears game and the pre-tailgate party at 135 West Central Boulevard. Yeah, if you don't know what a Whiteout party is, it's where we dress in all white. The Dennis family is ready to go. My wife has white, tight, like like leggings. Uh-huh. She's going to be a beautiful white ass. Yeah, 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 and I've got a. Uh, oh, it's gonna be Don't awesome. Don't say yeah, yeah, yeah about his wife, son. He's allowed uh, to. He's allowed yeah, yeah, yeah. to. He's saying it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. And then I'm him saying it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. part of our relationship. What I was trying to say, a no, no, <laughs> no, never say a no, no. That'll get me into trouble. Yeah, yeah, if you said a no, 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 you yeah. get me into trouble. She's <laughs> like, why did he say no, no, no? And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I told him he could say yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I'll write him an email. <laughs> Um, we don't need that. We don't need that. But the white some, get some glizzies cooked up by bus as he's yeah. calling them bus doggers. This is gonna be like awesome, to man. This is coin. like old school Tom and Dan, Mo DeWitt, free party. white claw, yeah. free shirts. Yeah, man. Well the shirts will be on your chairs. Yeah, when you at the game. Oh, when Tracy you get your ticket and got, go inside. She got a lot of and it's the white claw vodka. Uh, oh God. It's, uh, it's gonna be a blackout oh. show. <laughs> yeah, it might be a blackout. Well, party. It's, it's the same uh you know alcohol percentage uh-huh. as a regular white claw. Well, so five. I, people I, drink them fast. Okay. Though. I'm not really partaking very much right now. But yeah. before I decided I wasn't gonna partake too much, I did hit a few of those white claw uh, white claw vodkas. And I'm gonna tell you that I think they're a little smoother and go down a a little they faster, the coldness of my can while playing Xbox one afternoon. Oh, uh, you can, you oh, can yeah. just straight slam those things, dude. Um, just shotgun them down. So, Sam, yes. I, you told us about this story, and I did see this uh, on my timeline. Uh, it's a number up. one it's story. On your rhythm? Number one story on all of Apple News this morning. Yeah, yeah. Is this uh, a, it, what is it? Is it a tale of betrayal? Don't know. Is it it's a, a mystery. murder? But it's a mystery. Yeah, what's uh, happening? Right now, it is not considered a murder. It is just mysterious deaths of three men. Um, they went to their buddy's house. So it's Ricky Johnson, 38, Clayton McGinney, 36, and David Harrington, 37. They all went to their buddy's house on January 9th to, um, I'm sorry, January 7th to go see, watch the Chiefs game, right? Okay. They're all big Chiefs fans. They went to their buddy. There was another guy. There was a fifth uh, friend. Oh. He he made it out fine. Murderer. He, uh, He's he a left, murderer. He left the house early um, around midnight, and he said when he left, everybody else that was there was watching Jeopardy. I guess a Jeopardy rewatch? I don't know. All right. Uh, so he left around midnight. Mm, that's a bit too specific. And what was that first guy's name? The first guy that passed? Ricky Bobby? No, the first guy. He's, Ricky Johnson. He was, yeah. He's one of the dead guys. Sounds like a fake name to me. But, yeah. um, so the the guy that lives at this house, right, he claims that he went to bed. He has no idea when the other three left. Okay. His first initial and in, um, conversation with the police, he said that he said goodbye to them and then he went to bed. Now... Uh, the attorneys come out and said, why now there's inconsistencies. So people are like really trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, he said that they were still up and kind of partying when he went to bed. So he doesn't know when they left. But okay. In both instances, he doesn't know what time they left, how they left all this. So apparently two days go by and nobody has seen these three men. And one of the fiancés decides, well, I know the last place he went, so I'm going to go to this guy's house and check it out. And she saw a body on the porch, like on the back porch, so she called the cops. When the cops get there, they find her fiancé's body and two other men's bodies, which were the other two friends that were still left at the house. All three dead in the back of this guy's house, in the the backyard of this guy's house. Okay. Did they say how, and this is kind of morbid, but did they say how dead? I'm not saying like... Were they we don't know. Dead? We no. don't know time of death. No, no. Or I mean, like, like were that. they like seated in a chair dead? Were they slumped? Don't know. Oh, because like that's the thing that I think is making people go crazy. Is like, yeah, they're saying that these guys were found dead in the backyard, but they're not saying was it sign of a struggle dead? Was it Doesn't, like did they did not say it looked like a sign of a struggle okay. or a homicide gotcha, yet? They just gotcha. said it's a mysterious death that they're looking into. So there was no obvious gunshot. It was twenty nine or... degrees that night. Okay, there were no gunshots. Or there like... doesn't appear to be any injuries on them. So it's face value. Yeah, so it's not like face value foul play. It's like, we don't know what the hell's going on. And the dude in question is claiming... And it took two days before they found the bodies. He claims he's he never saw them in the backyard. Okay. So it's his own backyard. Three dead bodies back there never saw them. He also has two dogs that he has let in and out. 
during this time yeah. to go to the bathroom. Even if they didn't and two of two people, two of their cars were parked on his street. He claims he never saw them. Okay, that well, is Well, no, this is weird. Tom. This guy's Tom. He also claims this he, guy's you. You he don't never know got mother. any uh, calls or anyone come by his house or anything or text messages trying to find his friends. He had. He claims he had no idea they were but even did missing. They? Do they claim that they fired off messages? Then to he him? Fa- then he said that he did see a Facebook message from one of the uh, fiance or one of the spouses, but yeah. it was after he had talked to the police. He didn't see it before prior to that. And I he mean, says uh, he didn't hear any. I guess two people did come by knocking, looking for their family members, but they didn't see the body. And he's he w- while well, they were in the backyard, he didn't see yeah, it. This, like, lady, oh, like, this lady, like this lady, like kind of went snooping. on his property and snoop sure um but uh he says he sleeps with airpods and a loud fan so he didn't hear anything this is you dude like this is mr oblivious uh his friends died in his backyard he he's, is cooperating he's fully cooperating yeah, he's gonna go up the river because he's not noticing everything around him no i'm not to say i mean if there's no now if the only thing i could think of right well, let's say sam let's try to solve this so the bro- sam the, one, one of the brothers this. one of the brothers good at this watch this drugs uh, Boom. Well, one of the brothers oh, oh, of the, one of the brothers of the victims did say that he he if he had to hypothesize, he believes that there had to be something else in their system. He's like there's no way that three really smart guys all died in the same place at the same time. Like it doesn't like something else had to be involved other than alcohol. He doesn't know what. He's yeah. not claiming that that uh, he just like I don't know if they took it on their own or if they were given something, but there had to be something else in their system. There's no way that these three men would just sit outside and freeze yeah, to death. That's where I want to go. I want to go like you know, obviously they were drugged now or the, on the influence of well, drugs. That's you know, like usually when you hear of a young person's death, like what was the celebrity? They're all in like their mid thirties. That sorry. just died. Um, the uh, porn star Jesse oh, Jane. Jesse, Jesse Jane. Jane. Yeah, breaking news. Even her though and her, I guess husband or fiance, boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. Even though that they were, you know, in their forties, uh, when a young person dies, the usual suspect is an OD. Right. Uh, if they didn't sure. have any cancer or any sort of uh, illness, mm-hmm. it's like an OD if it's not a car accident or something obvious. And this isn't just one body. This is three bodies. Yeah. So now, that makes it even crazier. Now, they're or could, not all three having a heart attack at the same time. No, no. <laughs> but they all three could take some substance right. that had. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty know. popular right now. And again, I'm not saying this is what happened, but the way our culture sits as it is. I get it could have been they they it was laced with fentanyl whatever you know they could have been smoking weed or something and, you know who knows I, I get inundated though with mind altering uh, ads about how I need to take this substance to you know unlock the my true potential you know like I get a ton of those mm. it is fairly popular to do I'm not saying that that's what they did but so it seems like it's a to me, I have no idea. And Sam, you, what do you think? Is, uh, like I would feel like it's a ninety percent chance it's fentanyl. Right, I would <laughs> like, say so, probably. Yeah. Dr- drug overdose. Now, got- do we think that it was intentional? Like, they took it on purpose? Do we think that this guy maybe was behind it? Why would he cooperate with the police if he killed his friends with fentanyl? A lot of people cooperate with the police. That- I don't think well, this guy killed what his would, friends. What would be the motive to murder three friends with fentanyl? That I don't know. At a watch you know. party. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, make any know. sense. Yeah, now, I don't, I, I don't necessarily... Like, and I hear- it was like two guys that he went to high school with, the sure. other guy he's known for over a decade. Like, they're yeah. really close friends. That doesn't really make sense to me, but, you know, you never know. Now, it could be they, they were all doing drugs with fentanyl the one guy went to sleep the other three kept doing them and then they od'd right. and the one guy yeah. survived and maybe he doesn't well, want to i would imagine talk drug about test him yeah yeah know? i mean the toxicology will say what happened right it should because there's no way he like strangled and i have read in a couple or something articles right. i can't find it in the three that i have pulled up now but i did read in one article that the man is now moving <laughs> <laughs> from the place that he was staying at. Now, that could be because, hey, my three best friends died in my backyard, yeah, and, it's, yeah, yeah. and it sucks. Like, I don't want to live here anymore, but people are obviously, the internet is saying, well, he must have had something no, to do with no, it, because no, now no. he's moving, he's going to take all the evidence. No, as an anxiety mun, the first thing I would want to do when anything bad happens to me, especially something this traumatic, is get the hell out of here. Right? Now, Daniel, you did mention this is, you're like, this is Tom, he doesn't notice. Um, I will say that I'm this, just trying to explain it away because I know there are yes, people like yes, that. I'm yes. trying to be mindful of that because I am not like that. I, I am not I aware. See everything. When I walk into the, the biggest argument that me and Andrea get into are Maisie's doing something right at the house, 
and I keep noticing it, and I'm trying to wait for Andrea to notice so I'm not the heavy every time. Yeah, yeah. This is a true story. And I'll just sit there, and I'm like noticing it, and I'm noticing it, and Andrea's not picking up on it. I'm like, God damn it, please notice it. Please notice it so I don't have to be the heavy. I, it's a curse that I see this stuff all the time. Yeah, I will, I'm oblivious to a lot, and so I will not, like, if there's a, some car parked on our street, or some person wandering around, like, I won't notice any of that. I'm not uh, on the lookout for it, um, not paranoid at all uh, about my surroundings, so I, like, if Daniel came to my house, we were watching football, then I passed out, and which I do like to Irish goodbye, just, if I'm too drunk, just go and pass out it's the correct room. way to I do it. I don't want to make yeah. everybody, they're like, oh, come on, don't You don't be. want to shut the party down. You yeah, just yeah, sneak yeah. away. Yeah. That's the correct way to do it. What if I went around the corner where your plants and the air conditioner are and I died? Yeah, yeah. It'd be, if I, especially. You've been training. You don't even mess with your plants. I'd be back there for seven days. Well, if it's in the 20s every day, who's, you know, you're not wandering around in your backyard very often, I imagine. You know, it's a frozen tundra. So I could, but it is weird that you have dogs and you let them out and the dogs didn't, uh, like you alert you or, or something, or, or they wouldn't come old. back in yeah, because, because they're, they're like licking this body yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, that part to me is very odd. They go it, right I, for the ears. That part to me is more odd than like even the cars being parked out. In they the, go you know, right the for your ears. But, but, it's a what's... fact. They go for dead body. They go right for the ears. It's the saltiest part of a dead body. But then, what would be the motivation to not say anything? Well, we don't know. The cops. We don't know what's or going like, on in these people's lives. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. But man, if it let's say. This is something nefarious, right? Man, that is bold to take out three dudes in one time and have them in your backyard. That's why it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because I, I, I don't yeah. think it is. Now, is it possible? Because I don't know anything about this guy. I haven't seen an interview. I haven't seen his perp walk when they lead him out. I he's a very it. smart dude. He's a scientist. Like, he's an HIV researcher. Like, he seems very responsible. Oh, okay. That was and... in the story. But whoever wrote the story I was reading, I was like, that doesn't have anything to do with it. And they didn't die of HIV. No. They're, mm. they're, yeah, he's a smart dude. They all seem to be, like, they get along as far as we know. Uh, a lot of the family members are really mad at this okay, guy. So they think smart, he's not being forthcoming. So smart on the spectrum. Didn't notice. That's what I'm going with. The, That's and, what I'm going with. And I'm then going they with died like, of fentanyl. Yeah, they yeah. were doing something. Yes, was he? Okay, this is just, I'm just going to try and hit it. But it's weird. They he was all doing the drugs. Same... They're all doing drugs, right? Well, okay, hold, drinking. hold on, hold on. Because, all right, let's say you are, you know, you're doing some fentanyl, you're drinking, whatever, you're yeah, doing yeah. drugs. Then you go out to the backyard to smoke. Sure. Right? It seems weird they all go unconscious at the same time. Like, if one goes unconscious. No, you go out there to sit and talk. Yeah. Was there a fire? If there was a fire, that's why they, they went out there. They had a little fire going, and they, they continued it. Let's do a little more. Like, this is good. Let's do a little more. But they all went unconscious at the same time? Like, one of them... Well, one of, they, maybe one did, and they thought he was just sleeping. Well, the other guy went upstairs, right? But and it's then 20s do, outside. So then you do... You go, yeah. I'm going to do seven of these. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'll do seven, too. Or maybe we do, we're... Maybe we were really doubling up our dose or something, right? Well, although that porn star, her and her boyfriend, uh, OD'd that at happens. the same time. Yeah. Um, so, like, you're taking it and, you know, kind of well, b- your human body responds about the same time. So I maybe they all just amount? got tired and fell asleep What outside? if I chased your amount? What if you took, like, three pills and I'm like, well, I'm going to take three pills. Well, I don't weigh as much. Like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure, you right. know what I mean? Like, I want to be part of the cool people. And then one was on the back patio, but the other two were in the backyard. Like far I away. I can't find like specifics they, of where the bodies was, were found. I know the one that the the it says McGinney's fiance broke into Willis's basement and found the corpse of one of his friends on his back porch. And then she called the police and they discovered the bodies of his two other friends. No obvious signs of violence. So the two other friends must have been further away or at a place that wasn't exactly obvious. If they saw the one dead body, it's not like the I other think two, two were right there. two were in chairs sitting, and the other one had wandered away when he realized that he and died on the porch. Well, they're in the other two. Like and that's that's oh, there's four? no three. Like, there's one. They only found one body in the back porch, and then the other two were somewhere else. I thought they were in the backyard. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere in the That's backyard. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Two yeah. in the backyard around, okay. like, wherever they're talking, and then the one on the porch. The one was like, Ugh. Oh, the one on the porch tried to wander back. He was back. trying to wander back for help. Okay, and right, that's, yeah. he died on the porch. The other two, sl- sweet slumber. 
and yeah. good for them. You know, like weird. it's the way you want to go. Just you know, not knowing what happened. Uh, one of the cousins of one of the uh, men that died says somebody has to end up in custody over it, regardless of any situation. They're at your house, and three people are dead. I don't agree with that. Yeah, if you took, the, <laughs> yeah, if you were at someone's house and you no, OD to custody. drugs, you he took didn't yourself. say charges. Right. I'm okay with you sure. handcuffing me if it's my house and three people die in the backyard. You can cuff me, but I don't want any charges. Yeah. Well, they did question him. Yeah, you could question me. That's they questioned fair. him, That's but fair. he has not been arrested. They are not treating it as a homicide. Now, if they and they're f- waiting for the autopsy and toxicology report. Now, what do you do if you find that it's not a street drug or like a fentanyl or like a pain it, pill? Or, yeah, but it's a actual poison. Who's were they? Oh. Uh, then, then the guy now immediately you're back is, in. is a number one suspect, oh, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, and then so, but then what if you're the guy and then you really didn't poison? I wouldn't these rule other out that fiance who found the bodies yeah. either. <laughs> that stinks a little bit. Yep. You had too much information. Um, that that is weird. Uh, Did she get charged with a B and E? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think she was doing what she. I thought about that. I was like, Nah, you're you were doing what you felt like you needed to do to find your dead relative. That's super sad. And yeah, the fact yeah. that you had to find that, my God, the whole thing stinks. And what really stinks is, let's say this guy is he doesn't sound like based on everything that Sam's telling me, he doesn't sound like a bad person or an Uber party or somebody crazy. So if you just go scientist who had a party, a watch party at his house, is it possible that that guy super straight and narrow had nothing to do with it? The other three guys just decided to do some drugs and it went wrong. It's yeah. possible. Right. And that sucks well, because that guy now has to carry that for the rest of his life. Three of his friends died in his They backyard. did all stay up pretty late on a Sunday <laughs> and then had to work the next day. So, well, I mean, it seems like they're a little bit of a party. That's NFL party playoffs, crowd. though. You know, I mean, you know, especially if that's your team. What state is this in? Uh, I believe it was Missouri. Okay, Which would so make it was sense. in Missouri. Yeah, yeah, it, was it would make sense. Yeah, Kansas uh, City, yep. I'll, I'll, also, like, I guess if you're a smoker, you go outside, but uh, you were like, why are you outside in 20 degree weather? You know, or less than 20 degree. I mean, it was negative. Did you see the the game? It was negative 27. Yeah. You know, it was like minus nine on uh, game time. I think you so, go out there for a fire to talk. That's what you do. There must have been some sort of a communal area that they were hanging out. And in. there'll be more information yeah. as, you know, time. Yeah, but you're right. You don't out, just go out there to hang. And negative nine degrees. You smoke you know? or you make a fire and you sit around the fire and talk. Remember when that BDM said that, uh, and this uh, is a thing that we never think about because we live in Florida, but that one BDM said that his buddy in college passed out outside, and uh, and then if he wouldn't have, he believes if he wouldn't have woke him up and brought him inside, that that he would have just probably froze yeah. to death out there because he was so drunk and he was like passed out, and that could definitely happen if in negative nine degrees. Um, so. Could it be you froze to death outside because you got so drunk or so high on but something all you passed three, out? three, I can't, I just, that's what's getting me. If it yeah. was one dude, maybe. Well, I mean, just biology would say that everybody metabolizes, metabolizes rather, alcohol differently, right? So, you know, you'd have to be really just, I mean, the three Annihilated. of us, the three of us right now, if we had unlimited booze, It would be, I think, difficult for each... Okay, if the goal was... Okay, remember, all three of us need to drink so much we pass out. Mm. I don't know if we could do it. You know, like, there... Because it's it's a... it's hard to explain what I'm trying to articulate, but well, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think that it would. If ha- one of you passed out, there's I w- too many variables. I would. I would get up even though I was wasted. You'd and draw like, a D on my face with a marker. <laughs> <laughs> I, would <not laughs> I would not do that. that. I, I would not do that. But I'd be like, it's negative nine outside. I got to get you back inside. Wake up! Yeah, yeah shake I'd be him up. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so and if one of your boobs fell out, I'd take a photo. <laughs> it's, it's most likely that actually happened to me before. <laughs> oh, it, really? did, it didn't fall out. Some guy opened my shirt. Oh, oh no, no, that's too far. Man. That's too out, far. Took a photo that's too far. It. It's leave oh. only footprints, take only memories. You know what I mean? Like you're not supposed to touch the things. You're supposed to just participate by just being there. Um, yeah, this is a. I'm now. I'm so not. Ex- we'll see when the autopsy and the toxicology comes out. Where are we at with the? Because this reminds me of the old Idaho. Roommate murders. Where are we at on that case? Hasn't gone to trial yet. Man, that it seemed like we heard about well, they it. They found the guy. Yeah. And then I and I think everybody was uh, you know, agreed that this was the guy. So it's and kind of like there's no, more, it, yeah. there's no more mystery. It's like, all right, this is the guy, here's the evidence. And you gotta build your case yeah. because there there are some speculations out there that either he didn't work alone. 
you know, things like that. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta flesh all that out too, because what if he didn't? You know. So. Have you guys yeah. seen the video? Not to jump around to different like murder cases or scandals or mysteries, but man, that video of him, the Idaho uh, roommate murderer, yeah. and his dad when they're driving and they get pulled over, yeah, and there's body cam footage of him and his dad driving. And it like some people like you can kind of see like his facial expressions are weird and stuff like that. Yeah, I always put myself for a weird for some weird weird reason in the shoes of the dad. Okay, you know what I mean. And I'm like, oh my god. There's now body cam footage of me and my son, who's probably a murderer, and it's everywhere. It's just like, what do you what is like? What do you do? Well, the the dad knew, right? Or no? no? I don't think so. I can't, I, I, no. I don't recall the story. I don't think that he I did. I don't think he did. Okay. I don't think the father was and in And if he it. did, we don't know about it yet. Right, right. That'll <laughs> come out later. But no, I think the dad was oblivious. But my whole point is when I see the video, yeah, I yeah. can't help but zero in on the dad. Because yeah. now he knows. Because his son's you know up on charges now. Like They're building the case. You know you're in those videos. You know you were driving with your son. And you know that you were having small talk with your son going cross country. And he didn't mention anything about offing some people. Yeah, and yeah, then I'm yeah. like, "Who the hell are you? Do I even know?" Like, I, I'm just—I don't know. Maybe that's a super sensitive, emotional, no, personal it, thing to do. But it blows my mind. Like, I think, what would I even do? That's almost—is that worse than my daughter passing away? That my my son or daughter is now this person yeah, I didn't even mur- know, and they, they murdered people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's worse, right? Yeah. yeah. Think it, about like carrying. It's that worse because because oh. you it it makes you question everything that you reality. Like, what did I do? Then I start How they myself. up this oh, way? Oh, God, yes. And then they're gonna yeah. probably go to death row anyway. So you're gonna you know. Yeah, yeah. This is a morbid. Then segment. do you go visit your your child? That's a great question. On death row, if they did some heinous stuff. I think I would. Yeah, I would do. I think um, I would. I uh, have a uh, unhealthy relationship and love to for my sons. Yeah, that I'm glad I've mentioned, that you can acknowledge that. Uh, mentioned before that I am ride or die with mm-hmm. them. Uh, no matter what yeah, yeah. scenario, <laughs> <laughs> and and you can invent whatever scenario in your head. You're down. Just know, I don't want. I mean, I, yeah. I'm just going to try yeah. to protect them. You're along for the ride, and that's what I vowed <laughs> yeah, to yeah. do. Even if it's a shootout, even if it's <laughs> yeah, a yeah, shootout, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that is now. Now I don't know if that but changes the as they. I, mean, I don't. What because, are the odds on Van but, Boys? Right, that's how I feel right now. What are the odds on Van <laughs> Boys? And you know, you're included when I say that the Van Boys are three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are the odds on right now in Vegas on uh, Van Boys liquor store shootout going out? Blaze of Glory liquor store shootout. I How mean, do you guys go out? It, it's pretty much Car zero. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. They just don't got it in them. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Tommy or Matt, they follow the rules you know, they don't got it in. for a liquor store shootout. Yeah. At least right now, yeah, as, yeah. I, as I know them. But I'm sure everybody, like, even his dad. Like, I was going to say, when they get older, know. peer pressure might, you know. Or just people sway chemi- them to do some things people have, that they don't even want to do, maybe. People have, like, weird chem- brain changes as they age. I'm and, doing like, it right now. When people, like, I think I got a tumor pushing on my brain, maybe. <laughs> Me different. That's what you guys have been feeling lately. Yeah, the, I got a know. tumor that's making my personality completely. <laughs> don't I seem different? Well, the, if <coughs> you do something good. crazy, make sure to write the note saying "study my brain." Study <laughs> my brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I that's, keep forgetting to write those notes <laughs> yeah, because if you uh, <laughs> because we will because we'll all be like, all right, uh, you know. Uh, just <laughs> let's be done with it. Let's not study. Be done with it. Well, I'm just like, I go to study his brain. <laughs> All right, he's hey, dead. Look, you know. He's dead. We don't really. Yeah, yeah. Do we really want to prolong this? Like, I didn't really think that he'd do that stuff, but yeah. I don't know. You know, <laughs> he did some weird yeah. things. I don't know. It's better. Sometimes it's better just to close the book. Yeah, yeah it's not that odd. Yeah, the chapter's done. <laughs> chapter's done. There's no. We don't need a detailed explanation here. Like, uh, there's something wrong with Aunt Diane. Everybody was uh, in the uh, like consensus that so he. She was acting totally out of her personality, and they studied her brain. Yeah. Uh, or like, uh, you know, the, the, there's been other cases where someone does something insane, and then they're like, study my brain, and they find out the tumor. One of my favorites that we, and I know we got to take a break here, but one of my favorites that I feel like happened, and then I was like, ooh, I want to see what happened to this guy, and, and then I think he's back to normal as the old Coney. 2012. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean, that? psychotic uh, yeah. break, had a break, right? Like, yeah, had yeah. a real break, and then, like, boom, off the planet. Never hear about him anymore. But then he's he's fine. I think he's okay. Yeah, he's do, still I think he's, uh, I mean, doing But activism. nobody mentions anything about it. Like, nobody's like, hey, you're the guy that went uh, got naked and started slapping the stop signs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, I can't even recall what Cody was. 
It wasn't oh, a. I have no idea. I <laughs> believe it was some sort of a charitable uh, thing, and he was like one of the main. Uh, focal point uh, guys. But and was then, he against a dictator of yeah, some sort yeah, yeah, in Africa? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole charity aspect. Okay. He's trying to, Ugandan you know. Ugandan militant who founded the Lord's Resistance Army, yeah. designated as a terrorist group by the United Nations peacekeepers, the European Union, and various other governments. That's who Coney was. Correct. But But this guy was just... Like anti, like that, right? And he was like trying to raise awareness for it, and I thought he went crazy. Yeah, no, I remember. And they, yeah, they found naked, and they nude, found him naked, yeah. slapping a stop sign. Or <laughs> yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Like he had a, a total breakdown. Which I believe Martin Lawrence also did. Don't yes. quote me on that. But yeah, I think yeah. when people have a break, you take your clothes off and you find the nearest stop sign. And you start slapping <laughs> it. That's what you do. That's so odd to me it, because I don't understand getting to the point where you actually have. It's got to feel good though, right? A br- you makes you want to get nude in public. Yeah, like, I watched that's a video. On, I watched a video on Reddit of a you lady. Talk- I want to show your D to businesswomen all the yeah, time. Yeah, well, that's just that's extreme. an urge. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. their, their urge. Their urge when like they break no, is to show it. their D no, to I, people. I've never done it. This lady was having a break yesterday on Reddit in an airport, right? Yeah. And her psychotic break was she tore off all her clothing. It was in Jamaica, and they were trying to stop her from like acting a scene. She pulled it open. Okay. And started uh, spray crazy. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> yelling at everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until she was tased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, she was insane to begin with, all right? She couldn't have been perfectly normal. You know normal what sucks either, is when yeah. you looked at her, she's wearing the normal clothes like she was just going to Jamaica for a fun trip. Yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like. <laughs> and it's like, and that's what you got. <laughs> something had to be off, I, I, off oh, medication. Just so you something. Know, when you I can't... read these, just so you know, as a person on medication for anxiety and depression, uh-huh. as a person who meditates, I went to my therapist yesterday for my one month check in because I've graduated to a different level. She says I'm still doing pretty good. I always think it's drugs. Always. There is never a time when I don't think it's either alcohol or drugs. It is always alcohol and drugs. Okay, even in the if if someone told me Daniel got nude is running around Baldwin Park slapping stop signs. I'm on drugs. I well, I would say maybe he had a psychotic He's breakdown or He's like, having a coney. I, I just wouldn't believe it. I'm like I don't think you know, I don't think you have it in you. But like, would you, you think I, he's probably on drugs? Or maybe he's drinking. I, I, yeah, I've seen you drunk. I've seen You've you seen drinking. Me naked. You've seen me rip all my clothes off at the top of the right. You've seen me rip seen my top. You've seen yeah. the night I quit a real no, radio. No, but that's a joke. The night I quit real you radio, I took joke. all my clothes and I held my D and B in my hands and I ran to the top of my stairs but and you, wiggled my zit butt at you. You did it as a joke. I did. So you could, we would think you were having a I psychotic did. break. It, it, was, it was like, look, he's having a psychotic break, but yeah, I wasn't. No, no, but that so that tells me you're doing it for comedy now did it go too far maybe not to me <laughs> <laughs> maybe to your wife i still laugh maybe no to your wife. even to her she okay. still laughs at it okay <laughs> and so it's a fun it's a fun <laughs> andrea didn't like it's that very fun. Well. just so you know it was a not to find with andrea uh, not so good does a, she's a very modest lady and she don't like the tomfoolery that i bring to the table all right all right we'll take a break when we come back we can power through because I can play the old man who fell down. I want to play that video so bad. No, we well, got a guest. guest we got to chat with. All right, so uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back with the guest right after this.